Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Joel Moran and I'm here with Ripper Brown, Angel Velez, and Joe Dells. It's now episode 371. In this episode, we're going to do a mock draft with trades. Review WrestleMania 40, recap the biggest things that happened in the NBA this weekend, and react to John Calipari signing with Arkansas reportedly. Mr. Dells, you watched WrestleMania? I did. This is my first time watching WWE in damn, 15 years, maybe. It's been a minute. It was fun. I was watching some. We were at uh, Drew's baby shower, or Charles, shout to Charles. We had his baby shower Saturday. They had night one on, so I was just watching this out on the phone, just watching over the shoulder. Just, you know, trying to, trying to keep up with it. Um, I saw The Rock and Roman Reigns one. I was like, okay. And then I turned it on uh, last night, and I see it's bloodline rules. So I'm like, don't know what the fuck this means. So I had to Google real quick what bloodline rules are. And I was like, all right, basically anything goes. But it was fun. Um, I only saw the main event. I only saw it. But, I mean, I haven't watched wrestling, like I said, in a minute. But that was that was a really good match. That's all you needed to see, brother. Yeah. They threw us a heater. The they, main event was classic. It was mad good. It shocked the shit out of me. I was watching. Well, I, let me say, it didn't. It didn't shock me in the end result. I had a feeling, unfortunately, that the tribal chief was not going to win. It was. It was time for Cody Rhodes to win. But man, the appearances. Even though there was rumors that Cena was going to come out, there was Cena. There was rumors that Stone Cold was going to come out. That didn't end up coming out. That didn't end up coming into fruition. But I mean, Undertaker, the the, the shield, the music, just alone was enough to get you out of your seat. It was. Everything you could have asked for. It was an amazing main event. Taking a quick break in the action to talk to you guys about prize picks. You guys see the code up there in the top right. Code PAS for a 100% deposit match up to $100. And fellas, Riff, Drew, right now, we got prize picks. Oh, talk and to me. they are doing some things with the Doesn't NFL season specials. Oh, shit. With the plays. Here we go. Uh, any receiver that got traded or that signed elsewhere, they got a receiving play up there. So okay. you name one. Talking about Calvin Ridley, Jerry Judy. It's up there. Running back, Saquon Barkley. If you're interested in playing any of those plays, you guys can go to the link in our description. Go and download Prospects and use code PAS for a 100% deposit match up to $100. No matter how much you like people want to say this is like fake scripted or you know what's going to happen. People you like that suck. You still get shocked and you still get that experience of like, what the fuck? I didn't know this was going to happen. But like, yeah, I only watched, I, I want to say like three matches. Like I watched the Logan Paul match. Of course, my guy Randy's in that match. Then I watched. That the was a event. heater. Yeah, no, fire. Yeah. But <laughs> we got to talk event, about the moment that happened. Yeah, in that the match. main event really was just something that just brought back fans from the old era, fans from the new era. It was just a lot of good moments. I was excited. I hate those type of people because it's no different than theater. It's no different than going to a show on Broadway and watching the show there. And that's a tourist attraction when people come to New York. People mm -hmm. want to go to Broadway. Mm -hmm. It's no different than a episodic TV series. That's what WWE is. And I feel like now it's getting really good. It's like they know because they're the creators. They're the writers. But I would, I'm willing to bet my entire life savings. That nobody knew the Undertaker was pulling up. No, I was shocked. I couldn't believe nobody knew it. it. Nobody knew who's that. Out. That Maybe don't John Cena, but yeah. and everyone <laughs> said what? You know what was so awesome when the bell rung and everybody in the stadium. Nah, they started going crazy. started going crazy. <laughs> I was like, we know what's about to happen, yeah, but you only know this about to happen if you've been watching wrestling for sure, because huh? you know what Undertaker means to the WWE. Now nah, that moment was special. And Cody Rhodes, man, finishing his story. You could tell how genuinely happy everybody was for him. Like, even though wrestling is is scripted, um, there's still a lot of athleticism required in it. The storytelling has to be amazing. And a guy like Cody Rhodes, you know, at first, the guys who were in charge of creative, they screwed him over with sure. his characters. And he had to leave the WWE because he was thrown away and had to go through the indie circuit to come back and to be the main and top guy. You know, that's not scripted. That's real life that happened to him. And you could tell that it meant so much to obviously the fans, but even the, the woman who announces the names of the matches and, and, and prepares. Samantha Irvin. Uh, Samantha Irvin. She's heat. The, the WWE uh, Bruce Buffett. The, the, she is amazing. You hear in her voice. First, when Sami Zayn won the Intercontinental Champion, you could hear like her voice crack a little bit. She's overcome with emotion, but then go, Cody goes and wins the whole thing, and you hear her actively crying while trying to deliver the 
the the do do who her, do her due diligence to Cody Rhodes and giving him an amazing announcement. But that that just goes to show that even though I I was on the side of I wanted Roman to win, I really wasn't all in on Cody. But even I understood the moment was it was just an amazing moment, and I knew how much it meant to not just of course the fans, but specifically Cody. I mean the 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 story obviously tells itself. That guy's mom in it too, and well, I didn't the remember, Rock I was doing that, the most when it came to Mama Rose. Yeah, Mama Rose, <laughs> he's nuts. <laughs> was yeah. insane, he was bro. going crazy with he's with, talking to his mom, his mom on the sideline with the belt and just like about to whip him. Like the I Rock. don't remember. But I did see something. It was it might have been like some Randy Orton st- stuff where they got Randy Orton's mom. Maybe it was Triple H's mom when they were feuding or something like that. They it was got John Cena's kind of dad. Yeah, I remember Randy specifically. Yeah, punted John Cena's dad <laughs> in the head. No, he was a sicko for sure. Randy <laughs> was on demon yeah. time when it came to back when back in the day. Randy was one of one. He was so yeah. he was ruthless. He did, but he did it so well. He, I, oh, hate of course. I yeah. hated Randy Orton, bro. Oh my god, I love me too. I hated, I hated Randy. Randy. I loved every bit. Nah, of he, was, he was such a sicko, bro. When he, when he put Triple H in the handcuffs and then kissed his wife and then yeah, kicked Yeah, that H. was nuts. I'm like, yo, what's now, wrong when I was a kid, bro, I really thought that kick to the head, you were killing somebody. Yeah. When they were he only brought it out at last, last, yeah. like last minute things. I really thought out. we were getting the punt to the skull yesterday. Yes, they banned the move. I don't think that yeah. move hasn't been done, it's it's done since it those banned. moments. Yeah, it is banned. And he was about to do it to Logan Paul, but then... The prime bottle saved them, and we found out it was speed. I thought it was going to be KSI, but I was happy that it was speed. Randy kicked the shit out of him. <laughs> no, it hurt. It's you saw that the cap hell. fell off? Yeah. The cap fell off with a prime bottle. I think he kicked him that hard because he thought that it was padded. So he was just like, fuck it. I'm a, I'm I just a really think give speed little, all. bro. Like, he he little than me. He so is. it's like, and then, like, when Randy was roof roofing at him, I'm like, yo, <laughs> Randy's crazy. Bro. Now, when speed started to bark at Randy, I was cracking the fuck up. So when then Randy gave it back to him, RKO'd him. The table did not break. I was so going to ask yeah, if that was, head. yeah, if that was like some just specifically for the main event they were waiting for that table nah. because I was like that probably they hurt. replaced the table immediately after the matches they replaced them bro that didn't break I know that shit hurt yeah. Randy yeah. you could see it like he's trying to champ through it but bro that definitely hurt that's a sick dude bro. that was a good ass match there was a lot of great matches that one was great the EO Sky and Bailey match Facts. that the Sami Zayn Gunther one was good too th- that's it. oh for sure on night one that was probably a match of the night or outside of the main event of course yeah. but I feel like the same thing could be said here. Bailey and EO Sky, the triple threat for, for the United States. I mean, that really is a whichever your preference was, because EO Sky put on a show. Bailey was amazing, but the best the best match. It, it had event. to be the main event. And an and I, I know that we're gonna talk about it, so might as well. Is this the best main event that we've seen in WrestleMania history? It's the best one I watched. I think that the WWE has an excellent shot right here to make wrestling be mainstream Mm -hmm. it's on the transition to it and after that wrestlemania that was a great wrestlemania they have probably converted a lot of people into thinking you know what i'm gonna give this a shot this is very interesting because you think about it not a lot of great movies are coming out right now tv shows there's a lot of budget cuts with these streaming services so wwe has a chance to really cultivate aren't they going to netflix too they are they are going to monday night raw specifically is going to netflix you gotta remember the rock and the rock's movies were kind of flunking up that's why he went (laughs) over there you know he just did black adam garbage uh he you know he did uh i forgot another movie he did i think he had a cameo in fast x came over here been doing great now you got cody rose as the champion it's gonna be interesting to see i'm definitely i definitely would say that's the best one I've seen. You know, okay. I've seen the Triple H Undertaker one. I've seen The Rock and Cena both times. Um, I would say with that one, just being all that they put the most into this one. Like, you didn't have Undertaker cameos, Johns. Like, they did the most for this main event. Oh, yeah. This would be the best one for me. I'm fine with that. If you want to say this is the best one, I'm, I'm 100% on board with you. I'll give you some classics. You have The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels, Streak versus Career. That was a heater. People say that it's not the best main event because their match the year before is arguably the best match in I the history of WWE. The only time I've been this shocked by Undertaker was when I was watching, I was like 11 years old, and I was watching the old WrestleMania with my dad. Mm-hmm. And when, it was when Vince McMahon came out and helped Stone Cold against The Rock. That mm-hmm. was the next time I was as shocked as when I seen Undertaker. That was another one. That's yeah, the one that, that they say Stone when, Cold when, and, and, when, and when The he, Rock when was When he uh, teamed up with Vince McMahon, that was one that was like... Wow, Mm -hmm. what the fuck? To me, I'll always hold The Rock and John Cena as one of the best I've ever seen just because John Cena has always been my guy and The Rock is The Rock. That was obvious. I'm more of a fan of 
the second go-round, because obviously John Cena won. But the first one, obviously, just the idea that we were never going to see it again, and then once in a lifetime, twice in a lifetime, they kind of ruined it with the, the second year around. But they made it made sense. But, of course, that first go-round was excellent. The one that I feel like rivals this one the most would be the Yes Movement, Daniel Bryan, Batista, Randy Orton. Because of the the lead-up, the build-up to that WrestleMania where the Yes Movement was... You could argue the, the biggest movement in WWE, even bigger than the We Want Cody. I put up a poll, and it wasn't even close. Everyone understood. The Yes movement was so much. It, it was just, that is really peak WWE, where you have a guy who is a complete underdog. You look at Cody, just the look of him. He doesn't scream underdog. You know his story. Of course, he has been an underdog. But you look at Daniel Bryan, from where he started, to him having the whole B plus player mantra carried over him because that's what Stephanie McMahon labeled him. And then the fans just took a loving to him. You're doing the yes chance, not just in WWE arenas, but in NBA arenas. It, he, he became so much bigger than WWE. You had fans storm the, storm the ring in support of Daniel Bryan to get him his match in WrestleMania. And then that match alone, the fact that Batista tapped out to Daniel Bryan, a, 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 the, a, a wrestler as big as Batista to tap out to Daniel Bryan. It was a true passing of the torch. And why that moment is also significant is if you remember Daniel Bryan, he was the master of submissions. He could make you tap out in 99 different ways. And he had the running knee. That was an amazing move. But the LaBelle lock, the yes lock, the fact that Batista was able to, or he conceded the fact of tapping out to the yes lock. I feel like everything just hit so perfectly at once. And then Daniel Bryan had to put, do, have two matches that night. He had to beat Triple H in order to go into the main event. So you beat one, rest, one Hall of Famer in Triple H. And you beat two more with Batista and Randy Orton, who inevitably will be a Hall of Famer, in the same night. And that was, of course, the main event. I think that one is extremely close. But for the fact that you had Undertaker, you had John Cena, Roman Reigns, who's going to be in the GOAT conversations. You had Solo, who people may not like. I understand. But then Jimmy and Jay, who put who gave you a dud the night before, went out there and put on a great show. Jay going and dives off the, the stage and, and tackles Jimmy into the into the table. I mean, you had so many elite moments. The shield music hitting, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. The fact that Roman Reigns had a choice between Cody and Seth and said, you know what? I'm going to where it all started. I'm taking this chair and I'm hitting I'm hitting Seth the way that Seth hit me and, and kind of started the whole branch of Roman Reigns. I mean, this really had everything. It was the perfect end to an amazing story. And like you said, Joel, it's only the beginning. They're really this is finally now their chance to fully immerse themselves in the in the Cody era. And now Roman Reigns is no longer the champ and he kind of has free reigns to do whatever he wants now. For me. I was very shocked that the Jimmy and Jay fight was as bad as it was. It's heartbreaking. Definitely it's heartbreaking because that's years what they've talked about. But then when they took that bump the next night after, I was like, okay, I understand. Y'all got it. I understand. Y'all got it. <laughs> and they fell off the stage onto yeah. some tables. I was like, okay. Uh, that was crazy. You know what? I, you're saving your body for this moment. I understand that because that was hard. People were people were saying oh, it was a super kick fest. And that's exactly what it was. I mean, they were just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I knew Jay would win, but it was unfortunate that the match was mid. But yeah, I feel like the, the writers did a great job with this. And the, WWE has always had potential. But the PG era ruined it. And that was when the company was at its worst, when Vince McMahon was running things. CM Punk got up out of there. And CM Punk, who came from that and is now back in a company, he has understood that it's changed. And they have always had the potential, as long as they put on a good product, because their problem has never been the Triple audience. H's their their guy, problem yeah. has been the product was not good. But, but Triple H controlling it and making the product good in, you know, Leading you on, but at the end, giving the fans what they want, which is Cody as champion is what the fans wanted, then that's how you know he's running things the right way. The only time I ever felt like Vince really listened to the fans was Daniel Bryan. If it was up to Vince, it would have been Rock. It would have been Roman, WrestleMania 40 main event. Which, is, honestly, I wouldn't have been upset to see, of course, Rock and Roman once-in-a-lifetime type match. But... They understood. They heard the feedback. They saw that that segment with The Rock was the most disliked WWE video of all time because people really wanted <laughs> Cody. And they said, you know what? All right, let's listen to the fans. Let we, We've made them wait long enough. 
This is time to execute, and we can execute at a high level. They picked the perfect moment. They had such a great two-month span from the Royal Rumble all the way to WrestleMania, and they did it flawlessly. Again, people people can say what they want. Triple H has come out here and done wonders for the for the product. He's gone and been one of the best promoters. You can argue the best promoter for all of wrestling. He has put on a show, and I love how it kind of was the WWE's endgame. It was the the main event, and you kind of had all these legends pop out like Endgame 2. It was a great moment, for sure. It was an A-plus show. Now, before we get started onto the actual podcast, yes, sir. we did talk about WrestleMania already, so we could get we can move past that. Um, Last thing I'm going to say, I called the Damian Priest cash-in. It was. That I was called a great the call. Damian Priest cash-in. You called everything outside of Cody winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I had a feeling Cody would win. On that clip, I said, I want Roman to win. But when we talked about the predictions, I was like, unfortunately, I think I think Cody got this. Yeah, nah, you had a perfect bracket. Um, J. Cole apologized to Kendrick. How did y'all feel about that? <laughs> Remember, you know what's Yo, funny? They the were comments are amazing. Us. The comments are amazing. Oh, it, it, the, the Drake fans calling J. Cole corny. I find that hilarious. Oh, the MGK fans talking about music. That's fine. I respect that one. Uh, but at the same time, <laughs> J. Cole... Goes and backtracks. I can respect it as a man. Hey, you, you didn't like your actions. That's cool. But it's rap. That's kind of what it's always been. It's, it's been that beef. We, we kind of crave it. How many times have we talked about this? And I said, yo, we're getting our generations, Jay-Z and Nas rap beef. Yeah, that shit didn't last long. And I, I thought it would be Drake and Kendrick. Drake has to save it. He has to, I think he's going to answer back. And you know what? Shout out to Terrell. Of course, you guys know the Terrell bros. Uh, the, Mallory the Mallory Bros, Bros excuse Mallory me. Bros. Terrell Bros. Terrell and Terrence, of course. <laughs> now, nah, I know what you're yeah, what saying. But he goes and says, imagine if this was Drake. The comments are not saying, yo, this takes a real man to admit that he did something foul and he's trying to keep his peace. No, if this was Drake, they're coming at his neck. They're saying that, that he isn't like that. He doesn't want smoke with Kendrick. But because it's Jake Cole, and that's kind of how it's been this whole thing about being a, you know, being the bigger person. Again, I understand that. I'm fine with that. I kind of agree. But you can't go into a battle and then kind of just backtrack. That that's just not how it goes in the rap beef scene. I, so that, he kind of lost me with that one. But again, as a grown man, I can I can respect that. If you don't feel at peace with yourself, then I mean, ultimately, that is what matters. But come on, you you know we wanted a show. We wanted a show, and you gave us a little bit of a taste with it with seven minute, uh, with the seven minute, seven minute drill. drill. But I go with never. It wasn't it. It no wasn't it. Kendrick is so goaded, Dirk, man. Yeah, Dirk would never. <laughs> Dirk would just go out there. You feel me? I mean, the Ooh. last beef he got into was with Six Nine. He Dirk's, didn't do any of that. Dirk's last beef was not Six Nine. What Quando, was his last beef? It was Young Boy. Ah, uh, I was like Quando Rondo. Same uh, thing. Uh, Quando sure, Young Boy. Oh, with Don't, the fun shit, shit with Vaughn. Yeah, that's, that's, that's hard, facts, though. Yeah. Quando, uh, he had uh, people run up in a Quando concert. My boy, but Dirk likes that. Yeah, my boy be on the side. I'll just strike my boy now. Six nine is insane, you guys. They killed on. him. He killed him. Who? Six nine. Killed who? Dirk. He did his thing against six nine. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was confused at what you were saying. I thought you was uh, no, 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 snitching. No. <laughs> I'm on my six nine shit. <laughs> J Cole, that was a terrible look. Terrible. It was a terrible look. He might as well just not said anything. She for him to, for him to say to Pimp a Butterfly, put him to sleep, and then to be like, oh, never mind. No, he I, said I good kid, Matt City, put him to sleep. That's which is objectively bad. Time. No, no, I think no, he said to Pimp a Butterfly. Did he say both? No, he said that the second shit was, was talked about that put him on, Section 80 but it was kind of put him to sleep. Is, is, yeah, that's uh, his first album. Kendrick's mm-hmm. first album. Mm-hmm. Then it's Good Kids, Mad City. Correct. I think he said the second one He said the second one was the one that put him to sleep. No, no, no. Section 80 is a mixtape. Oh, okay. That, then that's yeah. what we're. If, if he's not counting Section Eight, that's his first thing. I get it. I get it. I wow. To right. Pimp a Butterfly. Is if a he's saying to Pimp a Butterfly, put no, shit no, to it's sleep. It's one of the best he's albums ever. Wow. He's yeah. wild. He's wild. Y'all are crazy. Y'all are crazy. <laughs> y'all y'all crazy. are crazy for no, that. I just, it's not my type. That's all. It's not, not my vibe. Man. I wish J Cole just would just stand on it one way or the other. You know, if you're not gonna say nothing, don't say anything. How are you gonna drop a diss and then two days later come out and be like, nah, I'm sorry. Easily would have rather him do nothing. I feel terrible for J Cole fans. Like I really do feel bad for all of those people in our comment section who were going to war, being like, how you listen to G Herbo? You're calling. You're calling. Jay Cole Corny and your goat just went up there two days later and said, I'm sorry, man. That's my bad. I'm gonna let y'all know this now. It couldn't be Dirk. Nah. Let it be Dirk. Not even A Boogie would do some shit like that. That's crazy. Embarrassing. Has I get ever got to rap, bro. I Lil get TJ. It. Oh, really? They did, they did Don Q have, just uh, dissed Lil TJ. Did he really? He just dropped his song. It's actually kind of fire. Don, I, Don Q can, I, he can, can rap. When he, he has his moments, Don Q hits. I just played ball with him the other day. 
Really? He be at LA Fitness. He hoops? No, yeah, he I've hoops. Heard, he's actually heard that. good. Really? He's just, he's just short. short, yeah. yeah he's, he's a shooter. Like me, or? He might shoot better than you. Really? His shit is actually good. Damn. Yeah, he's just small. His shit is actually chicken. All right, I respect that. No, to be yeah. a better shooter than me, you got to be like that. I'm, I'm not even his trying to say it. actually kind of chicken. Tough. Okay. Now, man, the fact that Kendrick could put the game like this in a choke code with a feature, a couple lines, no promo behind it, he's the best, bro. The, the, he's the best. Okay. Future's he's taking respect that. Drake, Drake, I will say, commercially, he's had more success. He's more consistent. Mm -hmm. But Kendrick, as a rap figure... He's over Drake. Mm. As it's just a pure hip hop rap figure, he's Drake more of a if founder. I, if father. I wasn't versed in my music, obviously you guys know I'm a Drake fan, but obviously I understand Blazer. the truth. Uh, you. you could argue that. <laughs> uh, but understand Good Kid Mass City is one of my favorite albums ever. To Pimp a Butterfly, understanding that it is one of the greatest albums ever. <laughs> it's nuts. I love Damn. Yeah. It's an amazing it, album. I didn't love uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, but it did have some, the some really good songs. Uh, but his impact on the game obviously is is one that you have to to recognize and 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 definitely can't be can't be overlooked. But when it comes to 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 disses, when it comes to rap beef, I mean, we've seen Drake in it. He lost pretty badly to Pusha T, but he absolutely bodied Meek Mill. And back to back was one of the best rap disses that we've heard. Although the story of Out of Done, damn, he not beating Kendrick in a rap 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 beef. He not. I'll say this: Kendrick and why dropped I, a line. That okay. has motherfucker dropping captions. Drake, but fuck Drake. the big three. It's only big. Here's me. the thing. He that's at uh, J Cole. That's the only line that he dropped at J Cole. J Cole did not need to get involved. He didn't. He solely yo with the Prince outlived Mike Jack. That's solely talking about Drake because mm -hmm. Prince, people love to say, is the better artist. He was the better music maker of the two of them. And Mike Jack, of course, like you mentioned, is more critically acclaimed, more consistent, He's the goat. definitely on the charts for sure. But you you look at, at Prince and obviously, I mean, that line is as, as clear as it gets. For all the dogs, he's talking about Drake, obviously. He goes way more at Drake. Kendrick is so Drake. Good. He just sent like a jab to Jay, like, stay out of he, He's just like, yeah, fuck the big three. It's, it's big me. I'm that's glad. also aimed at both, though. No, it's at that's both. That's aimed at both. It's aimed at both, most yeah. definitely. But that's the only bar that he dropped towards J. Cole. J. Cole didn't need to get involved in this. When is Drake going to uh, respond? He I'll be honest. To. I hope soon. <laughs> I hope soon. But I'm. F if listen, you take your time and you give us a beat, a, a, a banger. Drake like, could drop a distance within mainstream. within the week, week and a half. I'm giving him a week, a week and a half. There's max. no need to rush it, but at the same time, you can't take you can't too prolong long. it. You can't take you can't too long. Miss, you can't, you can't, can't drop it in th three months from now. No, no, yeah, and no again, like there. I said, a week, I don't a want week to and a half. Yeah, max. he's got an album coming out in six months. I don't want to hear nothing about that. Like yeah. drop a single now, drop whatever you got. Do you think we're gonna get something? Because Future and Metro are dropping like their part two or whatever. I saw that. Probably We're here think. for it. I'm here for that too. Yeah. I mean, listen, anytime, Wonder if Kendrick's anytime gonna get future and, on that. and Metro drop, I'm here for it. So Kendrick, when he dropped the heart part four, it's crazy how his lyrics they like foreshadow some of these things. The April seventh shit. He was like, "My fans can't wait for me to sun your p punk ass and crush your whole little shit. I'll big pun your punk ass. You a scare little bitch." Tiptoeing around my name, you're lame. And when I get at you, homie, don't you tell me you was just playing. <laughs> and then he has an ad lib like, oh, I was just playing with K Dot. Come on, you know, I fuck with you, bro. Wow. Yo, Damn. the way J. that Cole prophesized this J. When Cole beat is nuts. This was, this ago, was right? 2017. This was so long yeah. ago. This was, I think it was the hard part for I, I was going to say it was April 1st. I feel like J. Cole could have gone out there and been like, he couldn't have said nothing. He didn't Maybe have, March he didn't have 30th? to say nothing, but like, you can March have respect 23rd, for him 2017. And still be like, oh, close. you know what I mean? Like, when it comes to rap, I like, think the people beef. who are saying, like, I respect J. Cole for being the adults of this is so funny. Cause it's like it's rap. It's you're like Fuck no, bro. They're, they're not. They're not beefing, bro. It's just rap. It really beef, is bro. rap. No one's about like, to go out there and really put hands on one another. None like, of them are gonna are do we, that. Yeah. Like they're just rap beefing. They're no, they're a list rappers. Yeah, like bro, they're too famous. I understand like, J Cole saying that shit like five years from now, but bro, two days after, yeah, yeah. you dropped like, a yeah. whole uh, a whole project on. Did us. he drop? Did he? Uh, I saw. He said he wanted to take it off streaming. Did he? He take said, it off "I'm very proud of that project, except one song." I'm just like, come on, bro. I'll be honest, you I did can't not do listen this. To a song on that album. Yeah. I listened to Seven Minute Drill. I did not listen to a single you have thing. To, I mean, bro, come on. I'm here for the rap beef. I'm here for it. Oh, man. Right. Respect to you. Bro. Yeah. I'm here for future. That's my no, goal. No, most of Okay. Yeah. He's and, third. And he's me. a legend. He's third for me. He takes J. Cole's spot. So now. Dirk, Boogie. Future. No, Future's Future. March. Over Dirk. Yeah. Dirk's my favorite. Future's the greatest. Okay. I'm cool I with that. Respect Future's that. influence is on all of them. I'll be honest. You could argue Future has. One of the better runs. Oh, J. Cole in, lost in rap his spot. History. Future's now in the big three. 
You can't say anything about that. Yeah, no? yeah he's, he's gone, bro. I'll not be honest. Monitor. That's really <laughs> not not either, future not, 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 not getting that acknowledgement of being in the big three of like this era too, I feel like is one of the more not talked about things. I think he's acknowledged. I think he's like um, people will throw J. Cole in there over future. That's a little crazy to me. I've always thought future was better than J. Cole. Yeah. And the influence is greater. I feel like J. Cole's For lack sure. of music, and like music? glorifies him. Come I feel on. like the fact you that know J. Cole when doesn't people, drop like, like, oh You know how God, in WWE, so people, when people talk about the GOATs, they talk about Taker, Stone Cold, The Rock. They and never they really talk, talk about, about Triple H. H. That's how I feel like Future is. Like, he, he has the resume. He's giving goosebumps. Yeah, he he has cooked. the accolades. They just don't really talk about him in terms of that GOAT conversation, but Future should definitely be They don't be talk about the run of Monster, Beast Mode, 56 Nights, DS2, and then just the icing on the cake, Purple Rain. What a fucking run. All within a year and a half, two years. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I haven't had a future album hit like any of those, though, since then. You lost me. I disagree. Hendrix. Hendrix was fire. And Future was really, I feel he, like he, Hendrix he was, good, was so good. He, he's losing now, that me. run, I'll be honest, that run is like his, his top five he albums. Folded, so I don't think he any of them. He folded with Evil. I didn't love Evil. I didn't like it. Was, oh, it had some songs. I didn't I like it songs. overly. What was the shit he, uh, wait, he I, don't, went, I don't like you, or what was this, the shit he just dropped with him in the back of a car, the album cover? Uh, what's that? I know, I know Wizard was. I know what you're talking about. They had some bangers on there. It did, but not like the shit like he was dropping. Not what you used to. What was this? I never liked. You telling me you falling out of love? That song's a beat. That song's a banger. Yeah, he's like he has got some songs. Some. I'm that, I'm that, one, I'm that one. I never liked. Oh no, I never liked you. I never liked. Yeah, I never yeah. liked. I, you. I never, oh yeah. High, High off life was, was crazy. You liked it. High off life was crazy. All right, let me lock back in. I gave it. A, I gave it a couple of listens. Life it was crazy. To all right, me, all right. Now, Monster Beast Mode Fifty Six Night. I mean, that's just top. Even the shit with him and Lil Uzi was kind of hard. I'll That's say this: songs. the only one that I did not love in that run. So he went evil, Purple but then Rain bounced back with, with Future mm -hmm. and Hendrix. The Wizard, and then the Wizard was, the Wizard a, was a good project. Yes, a very good slept on project. I like Beast Mode. Beast Mode Two was like really Beast good. Beast Mode Two was very good for sure. I mean, I mean, he has more hits than misses. I mean, not nah, for sure. Save Me was also. I feel yeah. like maybe I need to come back to that yeah, one. I didn't love that one like too. Yeah, little EP. But I, I missed the Riv. Yes. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you got a blind ranking for oh, us to do. Oh, for sure. You know, I like to start these up, Sports get the podcast. get the football, you know, get the football juice going. You know, so hey, we're this picking is, a side. We're a pick a side podcast. For sure. Um, we just have our all different things when it comes to music and all the other stuff. But when it comes to sports, we're locking back in. So this is blindly ranking NFL cornerbacks. I'm Corner. gonna give cornerbacks. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna give you seven names. Seven. You three, lock in. This guy can't just give us like five. <laughs> no, it needs to be seven. I like it though. Seven, <laughs> seven. You know, so first name up. Y'all know I'm the blind rankings guy, so just keep that in mind. Here we go. Trent McDuffie. He's a banger. We have seven he's top names. Three. Oh my god. He is. <laughs> he's he's top, number he's three. three. He's three. If we get Sauce Gardner, that's the only guy that's number one over him. Who's over Trent McDuffie stamped right now? The, I've never told you the PS2? levels I'm going. No, no, he's not going to challenge. Fuck? Hell no. Hell Trent McDuffie no. just made a play at a Super Bowl. <laughs> so what? <laughs> what are you talking PS2? about? It, it, that is not on PS2. PS2 got 70 points dropped on him. I'm putting Trent at three. He got 70 points dropped on him. Don't do that. You're better than that. You're better than that. Yo, Trent McDuffie at PS2 right now. 70 points is crazy. Yo, he's better than that. Yo, right now, Trent McDuffie at PS2. You're better than that. I love Trent. So I'm going to say Trent. You're going to tell me Trent McDuffie's better than Jalen Ramsey right now. Trent McDuffie's all pro. Trent McDuffie's better than Jalen Ramsey right now. Right now, he's better than Jalen Ramsey. Yes, he is. Is he better than Jair right now? Jair? Yes. Jair was just hurt most of the season last year. I would have year. more about Jair. Jalen and PS2, there. that's close. That's close. Just like Joe, I'm not telling you how the levels are. Y'all know what I do right. is what have you done for me lately? This past year was one of the better. Listen, we have seven track. names. Compromise. Only person that's like. It should not be lower than no, three. No, 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 no. I was crazy to say four. Yeah. I'll be honest for a while. We can get good names. Hold on, hold on. Legerius, we didn't even name Legerius. And we Legerius. get Legerius, that's two, because he's over PS2 as well. You're hoping I, I okay. see Legerius. I can, I can level there. I, I don't, don't know think... if he's going to have Sauce, because I feel like he knows we'll just put yeah. Sauce. I'll, I'll start you know by what? saying Sauce is not on my list. All right, I wouldn't have said that. It I wouldn't have said that. Put McDuffie uh, okay. at fucking three. two if I'm keeping it stacked. I'm, I'm cool with, now I'm really cool with him at McDuffie three. McDuffie three. I'm cool. Okay. AJ Terrell. Six? There's seven names, right? Yeah. Six, seven? Yeah. I'm cool with Six, seven, I'm cool I with like six. six. I like six. six. Cool All right, six. six. I like six. Okay. Trayvon Dix. Five. Mm. I'm cool with four also. But I'm cool with five. Okay. I'm cool with five. Coming off the ACL. Okay. Also, fuck. Marshawn Lattimore is also a sleeper name. Yeah. I'm just saying. Go ahead. But I it's like with five. Trayvon Diggs, it's um Trey McDuffie's at three. Jalen Johnson. Yo, I mean, there's, there's only one name yo, in between. Yo, 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 Trey McDuffie's better than Jalen Johnson. 
It's a debate. <sighs> okay, I'm. You want to put Diggs at seven? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm just you putting these names out here. We got. We only have two spots in between Diggs and McDuffie now. That's why I say, listen, y'all don't fucking Keeping it in track for you guys. Let's put Diggs, five, Diggs at five. Diggs, five. At, Diggs okay. at five. Okay. Where'd you put AJ? Six. So you have Trent at three, Diggs at five, AJ Terrell at six. Okay. PS two. I'm cool at two. Two. I'm cool at two. Can argue one. You can argue that, one. Now that we know Sauce no, is can, on there. You cannot. But now, no. like, there's only a couple names you can really You're put really out acting one. like he was bad last season. Stop. <laughs> He wasn't. He, the the he wasn't right. Sauce Gardner. He wasn't Sauce. He, we, he just said we're not getting Sauce. We're not getting Sauce. I, feel, I just feel like Sauce is too easy to be undisputed. One. I feel like you can have debates for yeah. two. That's yeah. why I didn't have CMC in my right. So, so you, we so, put PS two at two. I'm cool with that. Okay. Jalen Johnson. That's one right now. Jalen Johnson better than PS two. You yes, already put is. him at two. Sorry. This past year he was better than him. Yeah, he was an All Pro. You're okay. You're, I'm not. This Jalen was awesome. Can't forget that PS2 is in conversation for best in the game. That's why he's the highest paid corner in the league right now. Jalen Johnson is. He just and got a bag. PS2 is not up for a contract yet. He just let 70 points get dropped on that. <laughs> right. He was on that defense. You're, again, you know more ball than that. All right, guess Jalen Johnson okay, at one. Jalen Johnson at one. Denzel Ward. Three. No, four. You already have three. Oh, sorry, four. Because Denzel is better than Trent McDuffie, too. No. What? I don't know. I think Trent McDuffie is better. No, Trent McDuffie's better. <sighs> That's fucking tough. Denzel was Trump pretty amazing this year, except he, obviously he did struggle with injury. So was Trent McDuffie. He was. Mm. But again, this was... Do we only have seven left? You have one left. Seven. Which means the final guy is Marshawn Lattimore. At seven? Which you have him at seven. Should have put Diggs at seven, man. Should have had Lattimore at five. So your final list is you have Jalen at one, PS2 at two, okay. Trent at three, Denzel Ward, shout out my brother, at four, Trayvon at five, AJ Terrell at six, and Marshawn at All seven. All things considered, good list. It's, it's the only bad thing worse. with the list is Marshawn would be one spot higher. I agree, but that that list is perfect. Yeah. You guys did pretty good for yeah, this. Yeah, especially if we're doing based off last season. Based yeah. off last season, Jalen Johnson correct. was the best corner of these guys. I'm with you. This was a pretty solid list. I liked it. I like that one. Taking a quick break in the action to talk to you guys about today's sponsor, Magic Mind. Magic Mind has helped all of us solve a problem that I feel like has been reoccurring amongst this content creator journey. That's procrastination. Discipline is everything in this space. And I feel like Magic Mind has helped all of us collectively. Yeah, Magic Mind has been a blessing to us. I mean, we try to record three times a week. And what do we do to make sure that we get that out there? We take our Magic Mind so we can lock in. And I've been able to drink this so well because it doesn't have a lot of caffeine in it. Yeah, I mean, I've been taking this. We record usually around 6 o'clock. I'm working 9 to 5. I'm tired after. I take this around 5.36. I'm able to sleep like a baby after. Magic Mind has been sending this to us for about a couple months now. And we have seen real benefits from it. It has vitamin C, 100% vitamin C in it. You guys can go to www.magicmind.com slash pick side. Not pick a side. It's slash pick side. You can use the description in our bio below or go to magicmind.com and use code pick a side. So our code is pick a side. Our link is pick side. Okay. Okay. I like that. That was actually well done, boys. I'm glad you guys respected Denzel Ward. I, just, yeah, I take this blind raking shit seriously. So if it's it's the emotion in me. Denzel well done. Ward. Great job. Oh, he was really good. Yeah, all I asked was respect for my brother. We're here. I like that. I like that list, Riff. And I like that you made an NFL because it segues, perf- segues perfectly into the NFL mock draft. Now, this mock draft is a little bit different. In the past, what we've done is that we've done circles. One mm-hmm. pick, one pick, a circle of picks. Uh, this one, we are all picking our teams because we did a recent podcast, NFL Agendas. Go listen to it if you haven't, where we gave you guys all the teams that we have some sort of fandom for, whether it's a player on that team or whatever else it may be. So these are all our teams. My teams, the Jets, Chiefs, Bengals, Vikings, Packers, and Falcons. Riv, what are your teams? My teams are the Chicago Bears, Philadelphia Eagles, Buffalo Bills, Arizona Cardinals, Seattle Seahawks, and the San Francisco 49ers. Well, my team, the Denver Broncos. The teams I will be selecting for are the Broncos, the Dolphins, the Giants, Rams, Lions, the Titans, and the Jaguars. Since... uh Almost half of my agendas have been taken already. Uh, I will have the Ravens and the Colts, really the only two teams I'll be pushed for this year. But the other teams I'll be picking for are the Commanders, Chargers, Raiders, New England, and my Pittsburgh Steelers. No Steelers fans, I got y'all, man. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so starting off this mock draft, the first pick in the draft. I already have it. I already have Caleb selected on mine. Oh, you do? I'm, I'm thinking about it. Trade the the picks available. Yo, can I get that? What you want? What you what you sending me? I need PS2. 
Yeah, and need, three first. I need PS2, every pick that you own, Sean Payton. Listen, would would three first, would PS2 and a second this year, or next year, get it done? With the first pick in the NFL <laughs> draft. Wasting time here. I exactly. am picking Caleb Williams. Okay, Good the pick. Bears' first pick in the draft goes to Riv. He selects Caleb Williams Lock for the Bears. Into the playoffs. Mr. Dells, you're the commanders here. I am. And listen, as the GM of the Minnesota Vikings, I'm calling you. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Pick up the phone. Hello. All right, listen. We have two first-round picks. Okay. We have a first-round pick next year. Mm Mm-hmm. We can also give you that second round pick mm. if we can move up to that second overall spot. Ooh, well, this is a unique situation because not only am I the GM of the Commanders, I'm the GM of the Patriots, too, at number three overall. And uh, maybe we can make a trade one more pick down the line. I don't know who you want, but in this case, at pick number two, I think right now the Commanders are going to be leading Jaden Daniels. I think so as well, I man. think the number two pick, as we stand today, would be Jaden Daniels. Number three, the New England Patriots. <laughs> I, I'm I'm ready to take calls. Uh, New England at number three. I'm ready to take calls. Drake May is, you know, on the board. Marvin Harrison is on the board. I don't know if New England is guaranteed locked to take quarterback. Drake May has been falling on some boards. There's people who don't love his foot, footwork. There's people who don't love, um, you know, kind of his short arms of, of throws sometimes. I'm getting a call. Getting a call. Hello. Hello, sir. Who is this? Uh, it's the Denver Broncos. Okay, what would you? What, what are you doing here? Uh, listen, man. Uh, I think you know I'm here. Pick three. Mm-hmm. Streets need that. What do you? What are you giving me? I'm gonna be offering you pick twelve. Okay. Gonna be offering you our next year's first. Okay. And that is it. Damn. Okay. I'll take that into consideration. I have All other right. calls. All right. Well, we'll do. Yo. Oh, my fault. Oh, hello. Rip, oh. I beat you to it. Listen, <laughs> the Minnesota Vikings. We got another first round pick this year for a reason. We want quarterback Jaden. He wasn't our guy. Okay. Doesn't fit our system, but we think Drake May falling here is perfect. We want to go. We want to go up and get him. Okay. What's your offer? We'll give you the two firsts we have in this draft, pick 11, mm-hmm. pick 23. We'll give you next year's first round pick, and that'll be the offer. <laughs> Three first round picks. Three first That's round picks. That's a compelling picks. offer. I have one other person on the line. Let me get back to you. Yo, yo, you know, Mr. Brown from Arizona. Uh, check this out. We want Marvin Harris. Bad. Okay. We already have Kyler Murray. None of these teams have pick number four. We're willing to give you pick number four next year's first round and next year's second round pick. All right, accept that shit. Accept that shit. Give give us that pick, and we can lock it in, man. I will, uh, hold on, we're getting getting another call. Hold on, it's Questy, it's Questy. Yes. Uh, Listen, I want you to keep me updated on any negotiations that happen. I'm willing to seal the deal on this trade offer right freaking now. This is what I'm about to do for you. Drake May's not going to get taken at three overall. The Cardinals, you have the third overall pick. Ah! Lock it in, man! So we get pick four. We get a first next year. God damn. You got that. So who are you taking at pick three? Oh, man. I made this trade for a reason. So with this draft pick, we're taking Marvin Harrison. We're going to the fucking moon. Okay. Um, I now have pick four with New England. Is anyone interested in Drake May? He's still on the board here at pick four. You have the Giants potentially at six. You still the have Giants are You still there. have the Vikings <laughs> with multiple first round picks looking to move up for a quarterback. Listen, man, pick up the goddamn phone. Hello. How you doing, sir? Doing fantastic. How are you, brother? It's once again the Denver Broncos. Okay. Uh listen, you lost a little bit of value here. You drop one pick, but I still am interested. <laughs> I'm gonna offer you the same thing. We're gonna give you pick twelve. I'm gonna give you next year's first. And I'm going to give you a second round pick in, in next year's draft as well, though. Okay. I All appreciate right. that offer. All right. You got it. Uh, Minnesota, I'm giving you a ring. Same offer is on the table. I want <laughs> pick number four. Except. Motherfucker. That's a good so, trade from Minnesota. If New England somehow gets an extra first from Arizona, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> but you trade down from three to four and then four and you pick up two future firsts and picks next year. I think if you're in New England, you go with three Extra first round picks that you didn't come into in this. this do you trap. pick again because you have the Chargers? Uh, oh, should I do? Of <laughs> course, well, he has to pick. He's now Minnesota. Well, has Minnesota the is pick. now on the board. Well, okay. Well, we, I think we know where he's going. As a GM of the Minnesota Vikings, Kevin O'Connell getting this guy. I'm going with Drake May. Mm. If I wasn't able to get Drake May here, I was going to call up the Chargers and JJ. I was going to try to get JJ McCarthy. Yeah, but Drake May, higher upside. We can develop him. Properly, and he has the tools to be a star. We're getting Drake so with question, the question, question. Because obviously, um, these trades are for joking purposes. But what what really matters is the fact that some of this may actually happen. Like Arizona may actually be moving up. But Dells, I'm you, be honest with you, bro. 
I don't think Arizona's moving they unless not. they're moving back. I, I, I can see that too. Mm-hmm. Dells, what was your thought process on Drake falling? Well, he didn't fall. He only fell to four here. But I'm saying, <laughs> like, what, what was your thought process on Washington not taking? Oh, I think hiring Cliff Kingsbury mm-hmm. puts me in the mode that if there was a tiebreaker between the two, they'd be leading Jaden Daniels. Okay. I think, I mean, I think Drake May would fit in the offense fine, but I just think what Jaden Daniels. Um, or just think what Cliff did with Kyler Murray his first couple of years in the league. I feel like Jane Daniels could do a lot of that. They didn't throw over the middle of the field a ton. Now that Jane Daniels at LSU, I think he still can. I just don't think he was asked to do it a ton at LSU. I mean, they were dominating by not really attacking the middle of the field. So I do think Drake Ma- Drake May maybe falls a little bit, but I would be shocked if he <laughs> fell out the first four. <laughs> I'm laughing because you traded up for no reason. You didn't. You didn't have to trade. But that's why I'm like, if I'm New England, you just give me an extra pick. I'll do <laughs> why it. did you even call him? He has to be a good GM there. <laughs> You know, you know what fucked me? Talk to me. I thought Drake went too. Mm. Oh no, Jaden went too. We were calling him on the phone. <laughs> yeah, the you, were, you were on the conference call, brother. That's on me. So I have the though. fifth pick here with the Chargers. Um, the Chargers need some weapons. They could use some O line. But I know a pick ten. The New York Jets could be eager for a wide receiver. Could also be eager for one of the top tackles. You have in this scenario. I'll just let you handle the Jets since I'm handling the Chargers. Would they be? Would you be interested in moving from ten to five here? I'm, I, I don't think I would. I okay. think we have Garrett Wilson. We saw Mike Williams hoping that he stays healthy. I think at pick number 10, we can either get one of the better offensive linemen in the class or we can get a wide receiver or tight end a, a Brock Bowers if he's there. I, I don't think we have to move up because there are still some intriguing options at 10. Okay. So Chargers at pick five, I do think right now, as crazy as it sounds, they're leaning tackle. But if I was selecting here, I would be going wide receiver um, Malik neighbors in Rome. I mean, they're so 50, 50 to me. I think they're, you know, two a two B behind Marvin Harrison. I think right now I probably slightly lean Rome. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can't go wrong either way. So if I was the GM here of the chargers, I would take a do and say, all right. Now I'll tell you what, this is not how I was, I was anticipating the draft to go. Not at all. However, giants do get their guy. In my opinion, we, the New York giants were not listening to any, any noise, of the, the potential quarterback situation. I get it. J.J. McCarthy's still on the board. In, re, in, in, in the regular NFL draft, April 25th, I expect J.J. to be of one of the top four picks. I truly do believe that. However, at pick six, we're going with Malik Neighbors. The Giants aren't going to think twice about this. They need a true wide receiver one, a true X, and they get that in Malik Neighbors. Now I'm on the clock again with Tennessee, and this is another easy selection for me. They've been they've been heavily trying to address the offensive line. They brought in Bill Callahan to be their offensive line coach. This is the father of their now head coach, Brian Callahan. This is an easy selection, although they have tried to work on getting some offensive linemen. Of course, Lloyd Cushenberry at the center. You can't. You can't add too many offensive linemen. I'm going to go with Joe Ald. I think he's the best tackle uh, available right now. The next pick is pick number eight, the Atlanta Falcons. I'm making my pick here. Uh, did anybody want to trade up? Anybody has any let offers? Me, let me look at my team. Here's the thing. Quick. I am the Denver Broncos. I would like to stay at 12 and get my guy. I think that after after the top three, I think JJ is going to be a good, pro, uh, a good prospect. I think he's going to be a good player. I don't know if I want to trade up for him, though. I think that at this point, I think I'll sit where I am at 12. If I don't get J.J. at 12, I'll take my consolation prize with this other player. J.J. might be gone at 11. J.J. might be gone at pick four in real life. I really believe this. But at the same time, I think I'd rather just sit at 12 and, and let the board play the way it's I'm going also to good. shape out. Chicago, we're good over here. That makes sense. So here, I think the obvious need for the Atlanta Falcons is edge rusher. Laetu Latu, Dallas Turner, Jair Verse are the three options that this pick can go in. In this draft, there isn't a tier one edge rusher like in previous drafts that we've seen. Will Anderson, the Bosa brothers, Mm -hmm. uh, Khalil Max to the world, Miles Miles Garrett. Garrett. We don't have Mm -hmm. one of those guys in this draft. Can't forget about him. He's actually tier two. He's he would probably be with these uh, guys. Okay, he'll probably be. Well, I'll be honest. At the time, they were saying that Bradley Chubb was a better prospect than Miles Garrett. He was hyped up. He was. Really hyped he was. Up. But he, he was. fell. He went to the. He was a six overall pick. He was five. We were five. Yeah. Okay. Which on well, it makes sense because two. Well, I remember pick one was Baker. Pick two was Saquon. Pick three was Darnold. Pick four. Denzel Ward. Denzel Ward. That's a fact. Number pick five, five might have was been the Chubb. Jets. Did we take Quinn in that year? No, no. It was Sam. It was mm-hmm. Sam. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you're right. Yeah, we're, Bradley yeah. Chubb. Um, for me, I, I feel like this pick has to go upside. I have to go with the player that. I think is the best edge rusher 
there might be some injury concerns, but I'm just going to forget about him because if we get him, he could be a Pro Bowl, All-Pro level edge rusher. That's Leia to Latu. Oh, wow. I okay. think Latu is the best edge rusher in this class. Respect that. It's just the injury concern with him, which is why they would go safe with Dallas Turner. Dallas. Mm-hmm. But Latu... If he's healthy, man, I think he is like one of those tier one guys. All right. He and was just hurt. Latu's he's played two years. He, you know, twenty twenty two played thirteen games, twenty twenty three played twelve games. Of course, it was a serious injury. It was neck, I want to say, right? That he was he was dealing with. Yeah, he almost was gonna retire. I yeah, think. F- very similar to Jalen Phillips. Jaylen you mentioned Phillips, that in the past. Um but I think playing back to back years in twenty two and twenty three gives you enough confidence to take him in the top ten. All right. Riff, Chicago you know Bears. <sighs> this is tough. This is he was tough a dog me. this past season. Fifteen sacks. Riv, can I give you a call? We'll call I'm giving you a call with the Las Vegas Raiders talk at pick 13. Pick 13. Um, talk to me. What's going so on? So right now you're at nine with Chicago Bears. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a huge need that you have that fits on the board for you if you're Bears right now, right? You, your, your team is pretty damn good for having the just number one overall Keenan pick. Allen. Just picked up Keenan. Of course, you just drafted Caleb Williams. The Raiders at 13. I'm looking at 10, 11, 12. The Jets, Patriots, and Broncos. Oh, you want a quarterback. I don't think the Jets take quarterback, oh. but the Pats at 11 and the Broncos at 12 Ooh. might be taking a quarterback. Uh-huh. JJ McCarthy is still on the board. I'm interested sure. if, I'm, if I'm the Raiders. Okay. So I would give you pick 13, and since it's a quarterback, you're moving down four spots. And the teams, there's, there's not a huge gap here. I'd give you 13. I'd give you a first next year. Call it a day. Deal. Okay, let's do it. I'll take that deal. So the final... Final details of the transaction is Raiders moving up from thirteen to nine or thirteen to nine. They you throw give me the a first. first from next year and this 13. thirteen. Yes, I'll take it. Might be it might be a little rich, but for a quarterback, sometimes you know you gotta do what you gotta oh, do. Sure, okay. run along. So uh, Raiders with the ninth overall pick. So Raiders the ninth overall pick. They'll be taking JJ McCarthy. All right, it's a good selection. Good trade by the Raiders. I think if you are. The, the Bears, you'll take another first round pick sure. next year. You don't got to do too much. Maybe you could have given him a second or, you know, a late a late pick in this draft. We don't have a lot but of time. Again, he right. might have been it's feeling other offers. I want to be Agreed. like, let's get I don't want to be too greedy. I'll take the extra first. That's fine. Yeah. I don't no need doubt. nothing on the boards too crazy. No, I right think now. if I'm the Bears, that's a home run deal for sure. All right. Jets on the board. Jets. You guys collabing? New York Jets at pick what number 10. He's not really hearing you. Listen, I think uh, this is a trade back situation if we can in real life to see maybe if we can. Get some more value throughout the draft or next year. Mm-hmm. But if we're staying at this pick, I think it got to be Brock Bowers. So how how tempted are you to go tackle here? Or offensive line? I mean, we're not taking any <coughs> interior, but Fuaga, Fatanu. I've heard it pronounced Fashanu, not Fashanu. I'm not exactly 100% sure, but either way. Um, are you 100% set on Brock Bowers? I just don't know. Again, this is what we're doing. I would take Brock. I don't know if Joe Douglas would, if he would take a tight end this early. The reason why we can think think about tackle is because Tyron Smith injury prone, Morgan Moses, he's in his he's in his thirties. If one of those guys gets hurt, who's our swing tackle? Now hold on, hear me out, because I got another team right. I have the one and only Indianapolis Colts. Okay, they've been interested, rumored, I think, for Brock Bowers. They've been one of the landing spots potentially. I think they need another weapon for Anthony Richardson. What would it take if you're the Jets to move down from ten to fifteen? You could recoup. You don't have a second round pick this year. You could probably take a tackle at 15 that you'd be interested in at 10. Is he cheating? No, nah, I think he's cooking. Well, in, th- in this case, I'm letting him have the Jets. Yeah. I'm, t- I'm, yeah. I'm oh, in the Colts GM. I'm calling. Chris Ballard. <laughs> I'm saying I need to get a real. I mean, they already have real weapons. So I want to get another weapon for Anthony Richardson to really build around him. If I gave you pick 15, if I gave you a second this year and say a fourth next year. Mm. The way I'm, I'm looking at it is I'm the Jets. We don't have a second round pick that went to Green Bay. Nope. We have two picks within the top 90 picks. If we accept this trade, we'll have three picks within the top 90 picks and be able to shore up some more depth for our team. So I'm going to take pick 15, pick 46, and next year we can we can take the fourth round pick. Okay, let's do it. And we can make that deal. Okay, okay. So the New York Jets get two picks. In the, top, in the top uh, 60 picks. And then if I'm the Colts, I'm running to that board. Brock Bowers. And I'm taking Brock Bowers. It's a good selection, man. Need some help out there. Would have loved, loved, loved to see him fall to 12, but hey, <laughs> it is what it is. You're back on the board, Joel. It's Dells. No. Dells has the Patriots. It's That's true, yes, because he traded yeah, the selection. Minnesota. Hold on. I, I'm trying to keep up with all the picks I've been swapping here. 
I did uh, it. Don't worry. Okay, okay. So you're you're at pick number ten. Brock Bowers was selected. Yes. So I pick eleven here with New England's. Um, they might have been thinking about quarterback if JJ McCarthy was on the board, but he goes in the top ten. You're probably thinking about Brock Bowers as well because you have um, just best player available type of tendencies if you have this bad of a roster. But I think at pick eleven, you have arguably the best defensive player on the draft, and Dallas Turner fall to you. So I would take Dallas Turner here. So you would go offense with the Patriots, even though they still need a lot on. I took uh, Dallas Turner defense. I mean, you would take yeah. defense, even though they need a lot of offense. I don't. I know you guys. Uh, I know Drew especially loves Brian Thomas. I'm high on Ad Mitchell at pick eleven. It feels a little bit rich, and with the Patriots having a bunch of. Do we have day two picks now? I don't remember what mm-hmm. I got with all these picks, but I got the twenty third pick too. Twenty third could be a receiver, and I'd be happy with it. I don't know if I'm getting an edge as good as Dallas Turner at pick twenty three. You're not thinking about a tackle here either. Tackle is tackle is a good call, but I also think it's a pretty deep tackle class, and you could take one at twenty three as well. Okay. Okay. Right. Dallas Turner. Pick 11. Now, pick 12, the Denver Broncos. We cannot go into the season with Jared Stenham as our only quarterback. I am anticipating that at pick 12, we are going to be selecting a quarterback. Now, a lot of people are on the Bo Nix wave to the Denver Broncos. I think that it is more realistic that Bo Nix is a Denver Bronco than the player that I'm going to draft. I'm going to be drafting Michael Penix Jr. Now, when it comes to winning in the pocket... Michael Penix can do so, and he showed that this past season. When it when it comes to avoiding sacks, you mentioned it. In this draft, he has the lowest pressure-to-sack ratio among all quarterbacks that are going to be drafted. I think he has an amazing arm. He can make almost every throw. It's just a matter of his touch. That's the one thing that's of one of the, the few things that is a question. Now, the biggest question is his health. He has had multiple ACL injuries. I understand that that is a concern, but I need I need someone that can work in Sean Payton's system. Someone that Sean Payton's going to be willing to work with for the next couple of years that we can build something with. And and Sean Payton has made it a point of emphasis. I need a quarterback that can win in the pocket. Russell Wilson didn't work with us because he couldn't win in the pocket. I'm going with Michael Penix Jr. because I believe that he checks all of Sean Payton's boxes and he was healthy this past season. I think that he can do it for the foreseeable future again. You're up next, Riv, with the 13 overall pick. So I got a quarterback. Of the future. We do have DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. We still need a wide receiver three, but I feel like I can get that later in the <laughs> second round. We do need defensive line. We need more guys. What Sweat did last year was pretty dope for it was us. It was awesome. He was great. And I feel like our corners were cool where we're at. You know, we got young, inspiring corners. See, like, if I was the Bears here, like, Dallas Turner would have been a perfect selection. But Joel, uh, Joel going and sniping him with... Yeah, with, he, he uh, definitely the, took him. The Patriots. Yeah, that was, that was a shocker to me. I'm gonna go. There's our new ones here too. That's another good pick too, and Byron Murphy. Yeah, we don't. I, I'm gonna go Byron Murphy here. He's the next guy up on the board. We do need defensive line, like I mentioned. What Sweat did, I think we can bring in any solid player, and they'll be great on that end. So okay, I'm gonna go Byron. Who Murphy. who has the Saints here? Did anyone claim the Saints? Is this a free for all team? <laughs> this might be a. <laughs> I don't think for anyone all claimed the Saints. All right, yeah. I like that actually. I like that we can collab on this. Now they need some some. I think that this pick can be relatively easy. Offensive line. I think it's tackle. They, they need an offensive yes. lining. Trevor Penning obviously hasn't worked out. Who's the tackle? Uh, I'm with Fuaga. Or Latham. That's how, who I think is between or the Fautanu. two. Or Fautanu. Fautanu? I think, I, I think he's, more really of have... a, he's more of a guard, like in the NFL. That... Also, I feel like anything's fine, but I, I yeah. get it. Tackle is fine. We so, can go with Latham. It doesn't matter. They need a tackle. So Fuaga. That's, and that's what about for sure. Fashanu? Fashanu is still on the board. I think Fashanu. I think for, for me, it'd be between Fashanu, Fashanu and Fuaga. Fuaga. Yeah, I'm cool with either or. Probably lean. Mm. I feel like they got to go with the best one, and that's Fuaga. did not see that. Fuaga is the best one here. the 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 problem with him, I think, is uh, his arms are short. Shorter, yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's that's the arms. problem with him. His arms are short, so scouts are kind of wondering whether or not he can win on the outside consistently on his blocks. I think Fuaga can play guard yeah, too. Yeah, Fuaga is a big boy too. Has yeah. twenty pounds on, on Fashanu. All right, I'm cool with Fuaga. Cool with Fuaga. All right, let's do it. Yeah, the short arms don't bother me. Okay, so now pick fifteen belongs to you, Joel. If I'm not mistaken, Jets. We're back up. Okay, we, we recoup some assets and and day two and day three for next season and this season. And I'll be honest, um, you guys can hit a home run and, here too. Yeah, listen, we Brock Bowers would have been great. I think we could get a receiver with that second round pick, though, and kind of, you know, fill that need. But here, it's got to be tackle. Who, who's your tackle choice here? 
let me. I know this is not realistic, but let me just intrigue you a little bit. Okay. Jerzon Newton. No. Uh, bulk up the interior defensive no. line. Would I be shocked if the Jets went defense? No. Absolutely not. We have to take Would you tackle. be shocked? We have to take tackle. You Listen, we thought that you guys were going to go and, and get JSN last year. We thought you guys were going to even draft Christian Gonzalez. You guys come out of left field, Will McDonald. Good player, but of course, what we Hopefully are anticipating. Correct. I mean, coming John out. Franklin Will. Myers, we have to worry about him in like a year. I would be taking tackle here and not thinking much about I it. I would not be surprised if you guys uh, went defense. Yeah, either. I mean. I think this is also receiver, though. Can we not take Brian Thomas with this pick? And we we can move. Garrett Wilson can be an X. He can be in the slot. He could be a flanker. Brian Thomas gives us that versatility. Mike Williams is going to be the lone X on the outside. Yes. But we can have a duo of Brian Thomas and Garrett Wilson interchanging between the slot and the flanker. I'm just worried because our offensive line stands right now. Tyron Smith hasn't been the healthiest. Morgan Moses is free agent after next year. ABT, love him to death. Two season-ending injuries. John Simpson is not this high-caliber starting guard. He's, I think, fine, especially if you have these other O-linemen around him. He's fine. Uh, Tim Minnette center is locked in. Um, I would be leading tackle here. I was also the one who traded with you. <laughs> so yes. however, however you feel <laughs> since you accepted that trade, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll concede to you. Listen, for me, I feel like our offense, this is why we can't go wrong either way. We'd get clowned if we take D-tackle. I feel more... No, for sure. <laughs> Undoubtedly. <laughs> for sure. I feel more <laughs> urgent to take a wide receiver because offensive line, both position groups, if they get hurt, we're fucked. That's 100% a fact. Mm -hmm. Our offensive linemen, I'm more comfortable in them, though, as just a talent group. Our wide receivers right now, as it stands, we have Mike Will, we have Garrett Wilson, then we have who Xavier Gibson, mm -hmm. and we have Tyler Conklin. Yeah. There is a drop off with that third pass catcher with offensive line. There might be a drop off, but we could get that in the second round. And if healthy, that's a stronger group than our receivers. Okay, which is why with the fifteenth overall pick, I'm gonna be going with Brian Thomas out of LSU. Motherfucker, Joel, you couldn't convince him otherwise. Nah, I. I don't think it would happen in real life, but I wouldn't be mad at it. I wouldn't be mad if I was you either, but this is pretty <laughs> upsetting. Seahawks, you're on the board. I am indeed on oh, the board. Now my picks get boring. Go ahead. Seahawks need a lot from their needs. Guard, center, edge, linebacker, safety. I was looking at a couple of these guys. PFF greats. Shout out to PFF. Not many versatility with these guys. Troy did not play much guard. Snapped in a, as a left tackle most of last year. He could, Troy could likely, he's probably going to move into guard or center, though. Yeah. Oh, you need a lot with your Seattle. I think you need to bulk up the offensive line, though. So I'm, I'm going to go with Troy here. Son of a bitch. It's a good pick. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great selection. Happy for you, man. All right. Here I am at pick 17 where both of my selections were just taken back to back. If I am a Jaguars fan, I'm not the most thrilled. However, one of my things that I was most adamant about with this Jaguars team was their lack of secondary. It's okay, bro. You can there. open your chips. It's just not opening. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh is, that a, is that a nice sponge cake? I'm Yo, so bro, sorry, guys. enjoy that. Nice, man. <laughs> Destroyed that. One bite. With the, with the Jacksonville <laughs> Jaguars, what I was most adamant about is their, their pass defense was not good. A bottom six pass defense last season. So it kind of gives them now some some flexibility. You could have used Brian Thomas for sure. It, you, lo you lose Calvin Ridley. I understand you brought in Gabe Davis. That's not moving the needle for anyone, respectfully. And I understand that you need some offensive linemen, especially in that interior. Troy Fautano would have been awesome. But you know what? I'm going to go with who I think is the best corner available. I'm going to go with Quinion Mitchell here at pick 17 in the second round. We can address the wide receiver uh, if we need to, and obviously we do. With the 18th overall pick with the Cincinnati Bengals, I'm thinking about Jerzon Newen here. I'm also thinking about bolstering up the offensive line and getting J.C. Latham here as well. How about you protect your brother in Christ? I That's our, what you need. Our brother in Christ. But, you know, I, I look at the Bengals oh, and I'm nice. like, you just lost D.J. Reader. That's such a gigantic You're also loss. potentially losing T. Higgins. Yes. And Tyler Board is still a free agent. Who knows? Maybe he ends up resigning. But you only have Jamar Chase under contract. I mean, they have other dudes. But A.D. No Mitchell one doesn't look terrible here. Yeah. We'll help him. Just saying. I feel like in the Bengals won't take receiver in their first one. I think day two is likely. That's fair. I really would love Jerzon Newton. And we did just sign Trent Brown. 
Trent Brown, if he's healthy, is one of the better right tackle options. Didn't you just lose Jonah? We lost Jonah, but Jonah, but he played on the right side last year. Okay, gotcha. So on the left side is Orlando Brown, mm-hmm. is Trent true. Brown. Very true. Even though I don't think Orlando Brown is very good, mm-hmm. he just got a, he got a page, so he's going to start, no doubt. And, and then you have Ted Caras. And what about Jackson Powers? Is he entering your matrix at all? Jackson Powers is interesting because I feel like the entire offensive lineman market has shot up drastically. Mm-hmm. And in the interior offensive line, it's Ted Caras, Cordell Volson, and Alex Kappa, mm-hmm. I believe it is. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's solid. We could definitely bolster it up. I actually love the Jackson Power selection. All right. I'm going to go with Jackson Powers Johnson. All right, awesome. Because he's the best offensive lineman, now, that, listen, arguably, in this draft. may not have made some trades, but damn it, I tried to you do some Jackson. mind manipulation there. Because the Rams will be 100% taking Jerzon Newton for the sole fact that we just lost the best player in our franchise's history, arguably the best defensive player in the history of this game. We need to we need to bolster up that interior defensive line. We're going with Jerzon Newton, who's arguably the best interior lineman in this draft. I'm going with him. I pick 19 with the Rams. I got picked 20 with the one and only Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, the Steelers could go a couple different ways. I think... For me, it'd be pretty easy. It's between receiver and offensive <coughs> line. Um, they do also have corner as a need. You do have Joey Porter, who I think was fantastic as a rookie. So I don't know if it makes sense to take a first round corner when you have a bunch of other needs. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, Respect that. I think you got Russ there. That's kind of alarming. You do need a quarterback, but Bo Nix is really the only thing available right now in terms of first round rookies, unless you're high on Spencer Rattler. Yeah. Um. So it'd be between A.D. Mitchell and it would be between Olu Fashanu. Like that. I think the Steelers are more likely to take a receiver on day two and go tackle day one. Fair enough. So I'll take Fashanu here at 20. That's fair. Good thought process. They it, need help on that offensive yeah. line. And they Both usually they dogs. usually hit on wide receiver yeah. too. So I trust them in day two, day three picks. Yeah, Broderick Jones didn't show. I mean, he's a rookie. Rookie tackles. They mm-hmm. could take some time to develop, but. I don't think he's locked to be like the franchise starting right tackle, left tackle, wherever they want to play him. All right, so here I am, pick 21, the Miami Dolphins. Now, I understand when it comes to the Miami Dolphins, they did just lose a lot. They lost one of their interior defense, one of their interior alignment in Robert Hunt. That obviously was terrible. They went and they lost Christian Wilkins. That's a huge blow, but obviously they made some moves. I will say I'm not against them bolstering up the secondary. I know offensive line would be huge here. But truthfully, I don't know if it's overly necessary given the fact that the interior offensive linemen that would have liked in Fashanu and Jackson Powers Johnson, they both were selected. I also feel like edge rusher would not be a bad idea here. And Jared Verse is here on the board. The fact that Cooper DeGene and Tyrion Arnold are on the board is definitely making me consider going with the DB. Cooper DeGene just had himself a pretty awesome day uh, at his pro day. I'm between Cooper DeGene and Jared Verse. Do I give them that, that extra boost in their secondary and really solidify what is already a solid unit? Or do I go out there and give them some depth at the edge position? You know, I think I'll, I'll go with the... I'm torn. I'm going to go with Cooper DeGene here at pick 21. I really do think that it helps their situation in the long term and obviously bolster up what's already a strength for them in their secondary. Run me up, Terry and Arnold. That's a good selection. Eagles pick 22. Any corner. We're here. Um, And New England at 23. I think uh, this worked out perfectly. I'll take J.C. Latham here. Great selection. Um, We talked about potentially taking a tackle at pick 11 with Dallas Turner. J.C. Latham would have been in that conversation. Um, And you luck out, you get Turner at 11, you come around at 23 and get Latham there. The Cowboys are also a collab pick between all of us. They could. Use, they desperately need wide receiver. They, they need another guy. I don't know if desperately. They desperately need another wide receiver. They do. They do. <laughs> I am saying desperate they do. too. <laughs> they like do. you're, we're not even considering DB. No, we, we can consider. You can consider a lot. Well, I think they DB, have a lot of needs. you have you Trayvon Diggs, Diggs and then Bland. you have Bland. Bland is he's still good. Very good on the ball. That's better than CD and Brandon Cooks and Michael Gallup. I think he's still there. Okay. 
I Cowboys understand. could use they could use offense. Could use line some help. linemen, of course. They just lost their left tackle. I know Tyler Smith's probably going to fill that void, but yeah. Amarius Mims enters the conversation. If you play him at right. I think Tyler Smith moving to left tackle makes it not a dire need to take it and for in the first round. Because I, he's been developing, and when he's played there, he's been really good. We know Jerry is always prone to selecting offensive linemen in that first round. And I think that in this draft, you can address the wide receiver in the second round. I I, I don't hate Nate Wiggins either. I mean, I'm between Amarius Mims. He'd be number one for me. Nate Wiggins, too. But again, this is a collab pick. I'm just giving my thoughts. I like A.D. Mitchell here. Keep okay. him in Texas. He does He does have kind of CD-like vibes just with the way I feel like his fluidity, the way he runs routes. Um, I don't know like how true it is, but there has been reports of people just saying that. his I don't know, not reports, but when you see him, the body language sometimes can get negative if he doesn't get the ball. Um, but also, I feel like that could be a cowboy trait. <laughs> like, you know, like but also sometimes like, he gets some problems. That's facts. And also, I mean, I, with A.D. Mitchell. A lot of receivers do that. Where A.D. Mitchell yeah. played at Texas, Quentin Ewers was terrible. Man. He was bad. Quinn Ewers was missing him. I would get frustrated too because he could have been so much more productive. The fact that CD lines up more in the inside, I feel like it gives AD Mitchell the perfect role in Dallas. It, he can stretch the field out vertically and he can be that receiver that opens up the offense. That's what they need. Like more than offensive line, I think they need another guy that can win, would you, that can put stress on defense. So would you go with AD Mitchell who? I think is more like CeeDee Lamb, or would you go with someone like Troy Franklin, who's more of a deep threat, who kind of gives you what you're asking for in AD Mitchell, even though I think AD, his route tree was, uh, you know, was deeper than was. Troy, Frank, Troy Franklin was. I'll go AD Oregon. Mitchell. Okay. Uh, yeah, AD Mitchell's better to I'm me. I'm cool with AD Mitchell. All right. Pick Anybody? number 25. Yep. Man. I'm the Green Bay Packers here. And I was planning on taking Cooper DeGene here because I was going to convert him to safety and we need some more safety help. But he got taken by the Dolphins. So with this pick, really, it could be tackle. How much do we really trust our left tackle, Rasheed Walker, being out there? I trust Zach Tom on the right side. It's just more so Rasheed Walker. How much do I trust him? But Jordan Love's pocket presence is so great that he can mask some of those deficiencies I'm looking at I'm looking at corner, but with Jair, I really like our rookie last year, Carrington Valentine, Eric Stokes coming back, uh Keyshawn Nixon coming back. We don't need to address corner in the first round. So you know what? I'm gonna go with a I'm gonna go with a toolsy pick, elite traits pick. I'm going with our Marius Mims. Okay. I like that. That's kind of like a you don't really have much to lose here because the Packers don't have like a dire need at any specific position. But if Mims is able to be the player that he flashed at Georgia, I mean, you could have one of the better offensive lines next season. All right. Are we 26? I don't think anyone claimed the Bucks, did they? No shot. Nobody came okay. to claim the Bucks. Uh, so the Bucks. All right. That's fine with me. Um, again, can use corner. Uh, can use edge. Jared Verse, Nate Wiggins immediately come to mind. They desperately need edge. I, Jared Verse. Are we cool with that being the selection here? I like Jared Verse. They could, yeah, Jared Verse. They could also use... Chop? Are we considering Chop? Over Verse, no. But Chop couldn't be in, yeah. in the later picks. Okay. Um, also, interior offensive line could use some help, too. Cardinals still have Brent, their next uh, pick, correct? Barton. Yes. Okay. They have pick number 27. Can hit a lick. Uh, I'll be cool with Jared Verse here. Jared Verse. Yeah. All right. Best player available plus need. All right. Arizona Cardinals, Riv, you're on the board. Yeah, yeah, a couple needs here. You know, I think we got our wide receiver of the future. I did do some dumb shit by not listening <laughs> for sure. Um, but I'm back. I'm back and I'm always better. At least you didn't trade this pick. No, no, this one stayed for yeah. sure. I needed this, definitely. They need corner. They need line. They need defensive line. They need a lot of shit. This one's tough for me. Once it gets into the 20s, I don't know who these people They are. could use corner. <laughs> Nate, yeah. Wiggins, Nate Wiggins, Kool-Aid McKinstry. I'm going go Kool-Aid go. for Aura. Okay, that's cool. I like that. You got Buffalo here now, oh, too. Let me find the best receiver available. <laughs> mm. Slad McConkey guy. He's, he's uh, fast as fuck. Yeah. He's Troy Franklin was a deep threat, though. Troy yeah. Franklin's deep threat more McConkey's on the outside. better. McConkey's, McConkey's more, a deep threat, too, honestly. Yeah. And he's better at the catch. You know what? I trust in my brothers. So I'm going to go Lad here. That's his Lad name. McConkey. Lad McConkey. We're going to bring in some white juice in this building, man. <laughs> All right. 
All right, and honestly, if I'm the Lions, I'm lit. Nate Wiggins, I'm not really thinking about it. This is going to be my selection, especially after unfortunate events with Cam Sutton. Nate Wiggins fills that void. Uh, and now we have pick 30 up with the Baltimore Ravens. Nate Wiggins. Hold on, let me just get him off my board. Um, okay, so Baltimore pick 30. Go a different couple areas. I feel like the first time around, maybe we went wide receiver. I don't 100% remember. Um, I feel like we went AD. Yeah, he didn't, he's not here this yep, case. Um, correct. They could use some offensive line help. They lost two of their starting five, and Ronnie Stanley at this point, his career, um, not someone that could be relied on this season or even you know going forward. You could also take a receiver like we did last time. Defensively, I mean, I just feel like there's more holes on offense that defense, just seeing who's like best player available right now, there's really not a ton that stand out that I would you know be itching to take. Um, Graham Barton is the top defensive lineman available. He'll probably be more offensive interior. Lineman. Uh, he's offensive lineman. Oh, sorry, did I say defensive? Yes. yes. So he's, he's probably the best offensive lineman available. He's going to be more so interior than tackle, even though they have him listed at tackle. They lost Zeitler, John Simpson. Yeah. Um, so this between Barton and best receiver, which is probably Troy Franklin. Um, I'll give Lamar another weapon. I'd go Troy Franklin here. Okay, I like that. Troy Franklin selected with a 30th overall pick. You're next up. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. A team that has very few weaknesses, you know. I think offensive line outside of Trent Williams is the biggest weakness. For sure. Cornerbacks outside of Ward is 100% the biggest weakness. I don't see any cornerbacks left. I see Graham Barton here. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the best player available. Nice. Now with the last pick in the first round. It's you, buddy. The Kansas City Chiefs. Bo Nix. We know that Patrick Mahomes Take a has such <laughs> a large contract that we need to build the roster out accordingly. Wide receiver is the position often mocked to the Chiefs, but right now I think any receiver that I take here, it is a bit of a reach. I wouldn't take it here, and we did sign Hollywood Brown, so it's not a dire need that we have to ad address in the first round. There is a man on the Chiefs. Pro bowler that's up for contract soon. That's Mr. Nick Bolton. How much are we going to pay Nick, Nick Bolton? Somebody who could command 15 plus million dollars on open market. Payton Wilson vibes. We're going with Payton Wilson with the 32nd that, overall man. pick. Love that he won in our first round, man. I've really been advocating for him. Good Why are you? Him. What's, uh, what's been the he's fascination? Just, he's just the, lo the lone great linebacker. linebacker, and he had a really good combine. That'll do it, fellas. I love this mock. I'll be honest. We had a lot going this on. This was clean. Riv trading up to, with with Marvin Harrison. Was it wouldn't awesome. have been a problem if he did if he just gave up like I'll give you three and just a fourth round pick. I don't want to have to deal with having to worry about anything else happening. The fact that you give up a future first is insane. I wasn't listening. I fucked up. <laughs> After that, though, but even still, you probably didn't even have to. No one's trading up for. I Marvin wouldn't have traded up if I listened. Yeah, unless you think like the Chargers go from five, they really want Marvin, they want to get five to three and jump the Cardinals. Right here, bro. Let's, Let's recap this draft. I'll do it by segments. So with the first eight picks, Caleb to Chicago one, Commanders Jaden two, Cardinals taking Marvin at three. Cardinals straight up to three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number four, Vikings take Drake May. The Chargers take Roma Dunze. The Giants take Malik Neighbors. The Titans take Joe Alt. And the Falcons take Lot two. That's the first eight picks. Yep. How do you guys feel about that? Um, we already spoke about Marvin. Other than that, Chargers getting Rome is awesome. Love that they get an extra weapon for Herbert. Uh, if I am a Chargers fan, of course. Uh, Malik Neighbors to the Giants. Finally, you get your ex that you've been looking for since Odell Beckham. I mean, a lot of great selections here. Quarterback Caleb, obviously can't go wrong there. Uh, and J Jaden and Drake, the Cardinals, well, excuse me, not the Cardinals, excuse me, uh, Minnesota getting their guy at pick four, who you can argue is the second best quarterback prospect in this draft. I mean, that's a pretty big home run. The top seven feels pretty locked to me. I think the only thing that might not happen is the Cardinals potentially trading out no, of please. pick four. They no, take, going back. Yeah, oh. I'm saying I think J.J. McCarthy likely goes into this top seven, top eight, um, and you see you know, one of Joe Alt or whoever maybe, maybe fall a pick or so. But even so, I think the Titans go Joe Alt at seven. Uh, this top seven looks right to me outside of the Cardinals trading a first-round pick more of one spot. The next eight Sorry, picks. last time. <laughs> <laughs> the Raiders take J.J. McCarthy, trade up and take him. The Colts trade up to 10 with the Jets to take Brock Bowers. I was the only one who made trades, man. You guys disappointed me. 
I made some trades. Oh, you fucking You had did. the teams that were most likely to make the trades. Okay, okay. Tra- I didn't need to trade. I with, made a trade. Yeah, you did. With, oh, with, you. with me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, didn't you make a trade with me? I didn't make any trades. I thought you did make a trade with uh-uh. me. Uh-uh. I made a trade with you. I stayed in my spots. Uh-uh. Oh, it really was just you. He, you guys were calling. I, but... Again, you guys made trades. I was the only one that didn't. Here we go. Pick number 12 with the Patriots. Dallas Turner goes there. <clears throat> Pick number 12. The Broncos take Michael Penix Jr. At 13, the Bears take Byron Murphy. The Saints at 14 take Fuaga. The Jets at 15 take Brian Thomas Jr. And the Seahawks at 16 take Fautanu. Jets get a good pick. Love Brian Thomas, especially with the unknown of Mike Williams pairing him alongside of a Garrett Wilson. You get Aaron Rodgers an extra weapon. That's awesome. Uh, I mean, a lot of these picks I really like. Michael Penix, I really think that he would he's the selection I would make. And that's probably the one that people are going to look at and think, oh, it should be Bo Nix. Can't really trust Penix. Uh, he's not an NFL quarterback. Just throw some respect on his name. I think he has a lot more traits than what people want to admit. I think the landing spot for the Raiders, whatever quarterback, if they take a quarterback, is a bit underrated. I think you have Gardner Minshew there who will likely start week one, barring them trading up into like the top five and just getting their quote-unquote franchise guy. So you have someone who is a veteran, you know, someone that the, the rookie quarterback can learn behind. You have multiple weapons in Tay. You have Jacoby Myers who had a sensational season last year. Michael Mayer had some moments as well. Um, and... You know, I think Antonio Pierce is building something in in Las Vegas. They they hired um, Bears offensive coordinator and blanking on his name uh, from last season. Getsy. Shane Waldron. Wal- no, Waldron went to Luke Chicago. Getsy. Getsy facts. Um, so spotty record there. Maybe didn't work out the best for Justin Fields, but I think that's a, a very underrated spot for a rookie quarterback. The next eight picks: the Jacks take Quinion Mitchell, the Bengals take Jackson Powers Johnson, the Rams take Jerzon Newton, the Steelers take Fashanu. The Dolphins take Cooper DeGene. The Eagles take Terion Arnold. The Patriots take J.C. Latham. And the Cowboys take A.D. Mitchell. Back-to-back years in this world, the Steelers take kind of these physical freaks that tackle. Broderick Jones, again, we mentioned it earlier, wasn't, didn't have his best rookie season. Um, but I think that was expected even coming into the draft. He was you know, labeled as a bit of a project, not someone that right away was going to be one of the better tackles in the draft, but if you're able to kind of mold Fashanu and Broderick Jones, you could have one of the more dominating, you know, physical groups in the offense, uh, in the NFL. I was hoping uh, AD fell 28. I love AD Mitchell going to Dallas. Yeah, he I, feels I like think a cowboy. That's a great spot. I don't know if it's because he went to Texas, but he just feels like a cowboy. I feel like that's a great spot pairing him with CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott, who's going to get him the football. I, I love that. And uh, I know Drew thinks that uh, he manipulated me at pick 18. I didn't manipulate but, you. But I think Jackson Powers it's a great Johnson. Pick is the best offensive lineman in his yeah. draft, arguably. And I know that tackle is such a position of need, but with the Bengals, they could play Jackson at center and t- Carter's can move to guard. You know, that's where he played in New England. He played guard. So I think the Bengals bolstering up that interior for Burrow, it's more important than ever now in the current NFL. And we, I don't, go ahead. I was going to say, we talked about this, I think, last episode or two episodes ago, how – the top 10 is just littered with offensive weapons and quarterbacks that we're getting into the 20s and Cooper DeGene, Terry on Arnold, J.C. Latham, A.D. Mitchell. Like This is a loaded draft class where you're going to have some really high-end guys going in the top 10, but if you were a playoff team last year, you're going to get an impact player almost guaranteed in the 20s. The, no, Bengals, the Bengals getting an offensive lineman to me is more important than addressing the interior line. I understand, especially once you lose DJ Reader, that definitely does enter my mind, but protecting the franchise, the franchise who has been injured, who was injured this past season, who in his rookie season was also injured. My goal is to protect him at all costs because we know what our ceiling is when he's at 100%, and that's we can go to the damn Super Bowl. And our time period is getting closing. It's it's closing more and more as as his contract is going to hit as these years go on. Let me do what I can to protect him as much as I can. And Jerzon Newton, you miss out on him, sure. Uh, but at the same time, if you're the Los Angeles Rams, you you miss out on on some good offensive linemen. But you go and you can get arguably the best defensive uh, the interior defensive lineman in this draft in Jerzon Newton. I mean, that's a home run selection. I think both teams won here relatively equally. And the next eight picks, the Packers take Armarius Mims, the Bucks take Jared Verse, the Cardinals take Kool-Aid McKinstry, the Bills take Ladd McConkey, the Lions take Nate Wiggins, the Ravens take Troy Franklin, 
The 49ers take Graham Barton, and the Chiefs take Peyton Wilson. You know, Nate Wiggins falling to 29 after his combine. I don't know if that's realistic, honestly. I think he goes higher. Uh, But at the same time, I mean, these picks, a lot of them make sense. I see the Bills going wide receiver. Baltimore, I see going wide receiver. If If you're Green Bay... You, you're probably hoping that one of these guys, one of these DBs do fall. Uh, but at the same time, you can't go wrong by protecting your franchise quarterback and, and Jordan Love. A lot of these picks make a lot of sense to me. Not really any mistakes that I really can call out at all. 29 through 32, I feel like there's a chance you could see a trade up from early second round into that first. Yeah. If the team falls in love with a Bo Nix, a Spencer Rattler. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head who else was on the board after this, but... All four of those teams, Lions, Ravens, 49ers, Chiefs, it wouldn't surprise me at this point in the draft where I feel like a lot of guys are kind of tiered together if you want to get some extra day two, day three picks, and then a team could come up and get their quarterback or whoever they want. Yeah, it was one of those where if if Jerzon wasn't on the board and I'm the Rams, maybe I'm looking at a potential, uh, maybe Bo Nix there as to to be the, the backup plan to Matthew Stafford because we understand his time is coming to an end. Bo Nix definitely was on my mind at that pick, but... Jers on falling, Aaron Donald retiring, just made too much sense. But I'm with you there, bro. I could see the Rams potentially being one of those teams that trade up from that 29 to 32 because quarterback is obviously the, the one of the, the most important position on a franchise. And if you really believe in a Bo Nix, which a lot of people seem to believe that that Bo Nix can go in and be a, a solid French, a, a solid football player, then maybe we see maybe them. Seattle's another team that comes to mind, potentially trade to, to those spots and get him. And that's going to do it for our mock draft. The second one we did, this one with trades, we'll do one more. Yeah. The week leading up to the draft. This one was exotic. Almost there, man. Two two weeks away, I think. It's the 25th. April 25th. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, it's close. around the corner. I this, have, uh, sorry, before we go, yes. since it is draft season, since this is a great quarterback class, got some trivia here. Can you mm-hmm. guys tell me the top 10 rookies in passing yards in a single season? Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston is number five. Okay, C.J. Stroud. Number three. Andrew uh-huh. Luck. Number one. Justin we, Herbert. Justin yeah. Herbert, number two. Let's see. Can you go Griff, go ahead. No, let's Riff get, get a name. Sorry. Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford, 14. Okay. Uh, Peyton Manning. Uh, Peyton Manning was at eight. Kyler Murray was at 10. Here well we go. Done. Baker Mayfield. Hmm? Uh, did you say Baker? No, but Baker was at nine. So you have 10, 9, 8. You have 5. You have 3, 2, 1. Was Cam here? Cam Newton he is number 4. Here. So we're missing right now 6 and 7. All right. Let's not bug Was out. Dak here? No. Dak is 11. Close. Good guess, though. Good guess, though. Hmm. This is pass. Forever. No pass. But what's the stat? Oh, passing yards. Pass, just passing yards flat. Passing. Okay. So I'm sorry. We have one. You have one through ten except seven and eight. Is this a peculiar? Are, me, they, six and are seven. they peculiar names? Um, well, we should know these. Did we, we name Andrew okay. Luck? You did. You did. He's yeah, number one. He's number did one. we name Matthew Stafford? Uh, Matthew Stafford is not on this. I didn't list. think he was. He I'm just going to name him for the sake of it because he was on pace to break the record. Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. No. Mm-hmm. He got hurt like week eight. Yeah, he got hurt kind of. Big Ben. Year. Uh, Big Ben. No. Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez, no. Yeah. Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers, no. Mm-hmm. He didn't play his rookie year. Bradford was 14. I don't know if I said that. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. It's seven close. and eight, man. They're stumping me right now. Drew Brees? Six and seven. Drew Brees, Six no. and seven. I'm going to say a bum. Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz is number seven. Oh, I'm going to say oh. a bum is nuts. <laughs> Respect him. That was your guy. Yeah, I think he's gone. So you're just missing number six. Jared Goff. Nope. <laughs> 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 number six we're missing. Recent? Relatively? Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to start. I don't want to start naming guys. I want to get it correctly. Tua? No. Oh. He did, He barely played. Ah, uh, man. Is it Joshy? Nope. Okay. The hell no. Sam Darnold? Nope. Chad Pennington? Nope. He said relatively recently. Oh, uh, Colin Kaepernick? No. Damn. Hate that. Joe Flacco? No. Matt Ryan. No. Uh, that was a good one. My good goodness, guess. that should have been it. Good guess. Matt Ryan is 15. You said relatively, like, it, it happened. It happened. Yeah, it happened recently. Yeah, recently. Mac Jones? Mac Jones. Ah, there we go. Nice. Good guess. Mac man. Jones, number six. So, top 10, Andrew Luck, Herbert, CJ Stroud, Cam Newton, Jameis Winston, Mac Jones, Carson Wentz, Peyton Manning, Baker Mayfield, and Kyler Murray. So, this weekend in the NBA. Daniel Jones at 25th most passing yards as a rookie. 
we had some they great games. Forget about games. that twenty-four and twelve season, man. <laughs> some great games happen on Sunday. Yes. A lot of them, a lot of big time moments. What was the biggest thing that stood out to you? Tyrese Maxey essentially playing every minute of a double OT, drops over fifty points. He had himself an amazing ball game, and this was a double header that they had, a back to back. Joel Embiid goes ahead and plays against the Grizzlies. That's been happening recently. You hear that a little spat? Yeah, I heard it. I guess because I'm playing my wire too much. Take that as you will. Uh, but playing a back to back against the Grizzlies, against that was the Spurs. A crazy. <laughs> you know what people start calling it? <laughs> They're worm. <laughs> <laughs> that shit gets me, but sorry. Back to serious manners. Uh, Joel Embiid played a back uh, was not did not play the back to back. I anticipated that he played against the Spurs, given that's when he dropped his seventy. But he played against the Grizzlies. Now having to go into a double OT with the Spurs. Spurs have been playing some good ball. Victor had himself a hell of a ball game. That should be expected. Nine turnovers though. You want to be a little cautious with that. You want to see that number fall. But he had himself a great ball game. But Tyrese Maxey playing hero ball, essentially putting his entire. Just giving it every single ounce of energy that he had, understanding that Sixers time trying to rise, get into that six seed as the season falls out. They win both this this weekend. Huge for the for Philadelphia. We spoke about it in our last podcast that they have a legitimate chance from the when, from the time that we spoke about it to the end of the season on these last five games to end the season. They can go 5-0 and and certify themselves to get out of the play-in. The fact that Joel Embiid is back, he is playing high-level basketball. You love to see it. Maybe Philadelphia makes more noise than we're 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 anticipating, and I think that's there's only some doubt in people's minds because they don't know what level of health Joel Embiid's at. But with the way that he's been playing since coming back from injury, it it, it, very, it rarely looked it at almost at all that he's missed a step. You're anticipating it, Joel Embiid to play well, the Sixers to be a six seed, a deep playoff mm. team. If they're at a hundred percent, I I mean their ceiling to me is an ECF. But I don't know if Ceiling. I can see it. So there's no way yeah, to beat no. the Celtics. I don't, I don't think so, man. I mean, the Celtics have had their number for years at this point in time. What do you, you think, talk, Riff? Talk about your boy, Riff. Who? Who? Paul George? <laughs> uh, listen, man. That just gives me goosebumps. I'm, I'm a, at the I'm expense excited. of the yes. Cavs. Win-loss. Yes. It was definitely a win-loss for me, unfortunately. You know, it's funny. Would you rather talk about the Cavs? Because, shit, we could talk about the Lakers and the Cavaliers. Um, I could talk about both, honestly. All right. Um, yeah, talk, have some fun. Talk about the Clippers. Oh, trust me, I had fun watching mm-hmm. that. I was watching the highlights this morning, man. I was oozing all over the place. Just the fact to see him just get into that playoff mode. You know, I was, I was watching the game for a little bit. They was up 80 to 59 at half. So I was just like, what the fuck is going on with the Clippers? But then, you know, they made a late charge, you know, got back in the game. And you like to see that from the Clippers, you know, just making a bit of a good stride going into the playoffs. You've seen them in Dallas getting hot at the right moments. Nice. It's going to be fun, you know, four or five. I'm excited to see that for sure, round three. Um, but... No Kawhi, so you definitely have to get out these wins. And they've been doing that. Paul George is playing at a high level. Harden's been kicking it back up a little bit. Definitely being more aggressive as of late. You, and with Westbrook's back there, 7-1, I believe, since Westbrook has returned. So that energy, that excitement, just Westbrook bringing that energy to the team. For the Cavaliers, I've said this, I said this last week. I'll say this again. I said this in the car. If they don't show me some shit in the playoffs, I don't really, like, I have nothing to say. They've been in a slump. They've been dealing with injuries, but I can't keep giving them the injury excuse all year. It's valid, though. It is, but at the same time, you're, like, you are you just blew a 30-point lead, and you were injured. So it's like, I can't I'm like I can't sit here and say, well, they lost the game because they was injured. You were up 25 you're points. Right. Agreed. They didn't have quite. Yeah, and, Do- and Derek no, no Garland, excuse for losing. Yeah, no Derek Garland excuse. was playing well. So Just in the like, grand, the, in the grand scheme of things, wow. Donvin, Donvin's missed some time. Uh, you have Mobley missing East some isn't, time. The East Garland the has gone. Right just coming back and forth. How many injuries have the Knicks had? Knicks, the Knicks have battled injuries throughout there. I mean, you could look across the league, but just in the East, but the like, Knicks are one You, you could say that too, but it's not like the Cavs have drastically fallen in the standings. The, no, you know right, what I mean? Right it's there, similar yeah. with, the, with, the, with the Knicks too. This has been too. the most grueling third seed team I've seen all year. No, for sure. Like it's been ugly. They've, but they've had some bad losses, most definitely. But you think about it, Orlando's young. They've Their offense champion. is bad. The Knicks are injured. The yeah. Bucs can't. Like, this is the perfect time for any time in the East where you can make a run and you're not playing well. The Knicks have one injury. They do. That's to Randall. Two. Well, I, well, they had two. But, and, but OG, yeah. OG, OG for the last two still months, was you're, you're holding your no breath. Randall, no yeah. Mitch even. I'm last not holding weeks. my breath with, with OG. OG. Okay. OG's fine. <sighs> yeah, he, he's, he was. He played some elite defense against Giannis he, in the ball. Anytime he's looked, gonna he play, he played you 38 expect minutes. him to play no, well. He's, he's, he's fine. He is fine. We have one injury as to Randall, who I've said before. You'll live. I'm good. I mean, he's he's been ruled out. I'm good. I'm excited for it. I hope he gets better, but I think the way we play basketball. 
the style might be better if yeah, he yeah. isn't always there. If, well, if I, OG's at 100%, I I'll I be honest. I think in the playoffs, at some point, you need a secondary creator. It's you probably not Randall long-term. You guys long really term. give 2011 Chicago vibes. But yeah, because right now, it's it's just Brunson. And of course, OG's been you know knocking down shots Respect when he was Dante. healthy. Dante, of course. Miles been doing his shots. thing. Miles You're not wrong, too, but I still but think we can make the conference finals. Yeah, I, don't I don't think the East is that crazy. Like If it's not Boston, any team can be... like These teams can lose. There's there's four teams that I feel like they're ceiling. Well, let me say three, because I think... The Celtics ceiling is the NBA Finals. Uh, there's three teams. You have the Bucks, you have the Sixers, and the New York Knicks. I don't look at the Cavaliers as a team that their ceiling is the, the conference I finals. I don't think that they're that good com- comparatively to these teams. The Knicks at 100%. That's a that's a conference finals team, most definitely. With the stars of Giannis and Dame, who obviously has been hot and cold. Really talk about Giannis, who has been one of the more slept on MVP candidates this season. But the way that he's been playing under Doc Rivers, they're a 500 team. I, that's pretty embarrassing. But you still have to respect the star power. Their ceiling, to me, is the conference finals. And then Philadelphia, if they're at 100%, that's another conference Their finals ceiling team. is holding on by uh, just by the star power. Star power, power alone. You're, so, what, you're 100% yeah. right. Like, it's not even about what they Because their team is just not good. Their defense no. still isn't good. Their offense is too... They're not bought in. It's it's their most impressive thing, but it's still inconsistent from night to night. And I feel like this is this has more to do... With just coaching at this point, yeah. you know, maybe Doc it was Rivers, just man. huge that but yeah. that Budenholzer, he had a solid foundation for them that was consistent. But his issue was that he couldn't adjust in the playoffs. I feel like with the Bucks right now, we're we're kind of just watching a team that really doesn't like playing together that much. Yeah. Yeah, they don't they don't like playing together. I mean, that's all it is. They just had. I, listen, you could talk. Before this Knicks game, these three L's they took with the Grizzlies, Raptors, we and We said Wizards. they needed that Knicks game. You, For sure. And because they were giving excuses like no Dame, no Giannis, didn't play together. As long as you have one of them out there, you have to win at least. You should be realistically win all three of those games, yeah. but you got to get at least one. The fact that you have Giannis and you have, you have Dame playing this game against the Knicks... Dame goes out there and shoots one for seven. He's 14 of 15 from the line, so he ends with 23 points. Like, oh, decent Dame game. He did not shoot the ball well. Um, the Knicks, especially in the second half, really took over. The third quarter, they outscored the Bucks 39 to 24. Then the fourth quarter, it was still somewhat the of a Brunson game. Show. Outscored him by nine. Brunson was sensational, had fucking 43. It, it's been really tough with the Bucks because all season long, even when they first traded for Dame, it's like, you have Dame and Giannis. I think I don't remember where we had them in the preseason duos, but I'd be shocked if any of us had them lower than like three or four. Like we were so high on this team, and we were expecting them to be prolific, even with Adrian Griffin. Even when Adrian Griffin gets fired, you're thirty and thirteen. Not to call you out because I was there with you saying Doc Rivers. I think gives them some more upside in the playoffs at least because at least he's experienced, right? Even though he could have some issues in the playoffs, this team is. We don't know what's going to happen in the playoffs. But as it stands right now, is one of the biggest disappoint- disappointments we've seen in the last few years in the NBA. To get a superstar in Damian Lillard to pair with Giannis, this was supposed to be right there. Them and the Celtics, 1A, 1B That's in the, the East. That's the problem right there. They got a superstar, but he's not playing like a superstar. Dame is not, like he's, no. He has not been Far anywhere from. near to playing like a superstar. And because of that, the lack of deficiencies in that department. And then on top of that, their team already had... Whoa, they already had to defend. They were already going to have a problem defensively. You know, they were already going to have a problem with their bigs being old. You know, Chris Middleton's getting up there in age. He's kind of washed. Call it how we see. He's just, been consistent when he plays. Yeah, though. when he plays. But the injury, he's just always banged up in and out the lineup. Washed in the sense that he can't stay on the court healthy. He's probably their second most consistent player. You know, it's just weird with he him. He can't stay on the court. The injuries with him are just so unfortunate. Like, I think, uh, I forgot what player it was on the, on the Knicks. I'm forgetting it, but. His mouth, he had a mouth injury because he fell on like a tooth or something. Yeah. And that was the injury he had. That's why he had to leave the court. Uh, but it's just unfortunate things like that that are happening to Chris Middleton. He's been dealing with ankle injuries all season long. Giannis said this in a post-game press conference. He was talking to the media, and he was asking him questions like, when is the last time that you've seen Malik Beasley hit a three and then do his celebration? Same thing for Jay Crowder. And the media answered it back like, you know, we haven't really seen that. And you know, Giannis was essentially just hinting at they're not playing with joy. I don't think they like playing with each other. And it's going to be hard to get a deep playoff run out of them because if they run into the heat in the first round, which can very well happen, I mean, that has upset potential written all over it. And I understand Dame in the past, he has always risen up to the occasion, especially in the first round. Yeah. But now he's kind of noticing that the, gra- the, the grass isn't greener on the other side mm-hmm. because he's on a team – with championship expectations 
And it's hard for him to fit his game around that because in Portland, he never had to worry about sharing the ball this much. You know, CJ was there, but it was Dame running the show and doing what he wanted. And he's not in a situation where that's the case anymore. Yeah. I, you know, what's crazy. I wasn't even going to talk about the Clippers and the Cavs. The thing I was going to talk about is the Rockets because I feel like a study needs to be had. This was a team that was on a 10 game win streak. You know, Jalen Green was playing amazing. Unfortunately, Sangoon didn't go out at the same time. But I want to, I really, I don't want to talk about the fact that they were playing, not better, but they were playing great without Singoon. I want to talk about what could happen this summer. And I want to talk about what could happen for next year. This is a team that has Eamon, Cam, Singoon, Jalen Green, Jabari Smith, Tarese. And those are six young, promising players. However, you may think of them, they all look to be, you know, good young players, some all stars, some whatever. Then they got the Nets pick coming up which is probably going to be top five, top eight. So you're bringing in another high-level role player, I assume. Then you got veterans in Dylan Brooks, in Fran Van Vliet, in uh, Jeff Green. And now you got Ime, who's completely changed and altered the culture for this team that was literally called the AAU team just last year. Now they were on the brink of a playing berth. You know, unfortunately, they did uh, They did what Ime said. They were soft. They wasn't ready for the moment. It's fine. This team is young. They've never really played any importance of basketball for the past three or four years. Now they get to see that. They had fun with it. They know what it feels like. They're going to come back ready next year. Jalen Green and Sangoon are due for some rookie money coming up soon. You know, so that's going to be important. Jalen Green kind of sort of have has played his way into now you thinking about giving him that money. You know, I know you want, it, you want it to be consistent, and I absolutely am, am, am calling for it to be consistent because, you know, it happened over the last month or two. He's kind of slowed down just a little bit, but he was on a tear, and he was on a tear last year during this stretch, but now this time it's been more important because they had an opportunity to make the plan. So now I'm looking to see – how does this team go from possibly making a plan to now going into next year? Because you're not going to have a super ton of money. You know, there's not even going to be a super ton of free agents. You're going to bring in another top 10 pick, and then you got your players to grow with, to go up, to, you know, continue to get better. And then Jalen Green and Singoon. Singoon is going to get the contract, but they're both playing for that contract. So, like, I just the, – the Rockets' future is just too bright. But I think I'm going to be interested interested to see in the summer how they operate with these young players, who comes back better than last year, who's coming back ready for the grind, how Ime has his team looking, who do they draft? Because they really realistically, I don't even know where they go in the draft. Do they go with a sharpshooter? Do they go with another big man? Do they go with a do-it-all wing? Like, it's so many ways they can go. Like, do they have aim and transition to the three? Do they keep Cam off the bench? Like, what do they do with this team of, like, really good young players? So I'm, I'm just, like, the Rockets' future is so bright, but at the same time, it's very delicate because one, you know, bad mistake, one not signing, this guy, one trading, this guy too fast could lead to the wrong path. So I'm very interested to see how they go in this. I think Shangun's getting the contract first. For sure. yes. I think he deserves it. He's been more consistent all year. Jalen Green, it's about how he trains in the offseason and how he prepares yep. for next season to be consistent. Because if he was playing at a high level, an all-star level all year long, got the back. this team could have been in the playoffs right now. They could have mm -hmm. been a top eight seed. So they need him to be better. Amen Thompson needs to work on his jump shot. Handles he too. needs to come into next season as a better three-point shooter. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't rule it out if they targeted Donovan Klingon in the draft. You know, an underrated acquisition that they made that's going to come back next year, Stephen Adams. For sure. You know, Stephen Adams anchoring a Klingin? second unit. Well, maybe for development purposes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I don't think he goes past. Five. And also, I think Klingon. He played if himself you, into top five for sure. If the Rockets have talked themselves into a certain future of being more spread out on the court, mm. both on offense and defense, and having versatility then Klingon could be, I can see, a replacement for Shangun right, right, right. at the five if that's the avenue they do want to take. Because some people have speculated, Tim McMahon, who covers them, has speculated that he thinks uh, one of the two could get traded, either it's Shangun or Jalen Green. So depending on that route, you know, Klingon could make sense to replace Shangun. And with Jalen Green, it's probably just starting one of the players you already have or maybe drafting another guy. Who trades yeah. for Shangun if he became available? Indiana? I think that Jalen Green has probably upped his trade value, and Indiana's not a bad name for sure. You but a bit of rim protector, maybe if you have Hallie there, and I mean Miles can play the four. Okay, that's interesting. It's not terrible, you know. Yeah. Miles and well, would you do a, a package centered around Shangun? Where how does Miles, with Tyrese, and Shangun work there? Oh, now we're just listen. I'm just throwing out the table. Okay, yeah, I wasn't nice. thinking about it too uh -huh. much. What about you know? the Bulls? They, they have something. nothing to give. <laughs> That's just but I would love it. But we have nothing. Yeah. Hey, I could dig in them. Caruso, some picks. 
We trade Caruso for Sangoon? We have to start over. You do. I hate that for you guys. Yeah, we do. Uh, but I understand, and I get it. Uh, I, If I'm looking at the Rocket situation, I feel like we've seen the league have more success with the big being at the forefront as of recent. Uh, we look at, of course, the, the king of the league, Nikola Jokic, you have Joel Embiid. Obviously, Victor Wembanyama has come in. I feel like he's one of those next names up. Uh, we've seen the way that Anthony Davis has been playing. Of course, he has partnered with LeBron James. That's different situations from Joel, from Nikola Jokic. But Jalen Green has played himself, at least in this month of March, into upping his trade value. He, he was playing some pretty bad basketball earlier in the season, but his month of March was excellent. Shot the ball from the three-point line for over 40%. Month of month of April, he's definitely struggled over these last four of, of five games. Uh, he is shooting under forty percent or less in in those games, and it, this is the moments where we were talking about potentially them solidifying themselves as the the ten seed. Of course, the Warriors, as they put up on their their Twitter to let the world know, they <laughs> top ten clinch. They clinched the tenth the tenth seed. Brush was embarrassed. I was, it was I was crazy. I was embarrassed. I would love to be in that marketing meeting when they said, let's do this. I would have literally <laughs> got left. I, yeah. I was no. thinking about Dell's question with Shangun where he gets traded. Yeah. There aren't many great fits. The, the best fit is with Houston. Probably, I think yeah. that's where he should be. Because you really don't want, like Tyrese, for example, on the Pacers, like you don't want someone who's super ball dominant and with when Tyrese is healthy, as good as he is to take away touch, even though Shangun is good in his own right, you kind of need him to be the focal point of the offense. You know, I'm really trying to go through teams to see where he would fit. Is Sangoon like locked and loaded? He would not. He's not a four. You can't play him in that tweener. Him in four. I, yeah, he's a center for me. I think I, I'm just gonna play. Even him Even though there. he can handle the ball, you don't consider it because he can't stretch the floor that well. It's more so defense mm-hmm. purposes. Why I would just put him at the five? Okay. All right, because you're right. I'm really trying to find teams that Charlotte. really would be a fit. Does Dallas intrigue anyone? Getting Gafford and yeah, I'm straight. They're good having lively, I think they're fine. You got okay. Kyrie, they need athletic yeah. bigs around Luca, and I think they need athletic wings now. They need some more consistent ones. Do the even Pel- Derek Jones Jr. and PJ are playing great? Do the Pelicans intrigue you at all? The Pelicans are interesting, but the package that have to be what if Trey Murphy or Herb, Herb Jones? No Maybe way, Trey Murphy. Not a ch- and I don't see I don't see Herb Jones getting traded. I get it. Shangun's a great I talent. I don't want to meet him. In that more sense. of an athletic uh, stretch five that can defend the like, rim well. Uh, in terms of fair enough. Fair enough. I think the best fit is with Houston, and that's why he should stay there. Yeah, I'm just I, I agree. I think Houston is definitely the best I fit. I mean Jalen Green. Warriors? That would actually be a great fit. Draymond Warriors? the foe? Warriors, Warriors low, get, low question. Warriors Grizzlies is not a bad fit. I think they Because you have Jaron, the defensive I think, anchor. I don't think Singoon fits next to Jaron. But I feel like then less offensive responsibility in Jaron. I feel like Maybe you don't want to get him disengaged because I feel like sometimes that's a problem. I think Memphis is probably going to go Klingon in the draft and pair. That'd him be with fucking nuts. Yeah, Klingon and Jaron's fire. I'm moved. But Jaron's been playing a lot of the five this year. Yeah, for sure. But he's had to. Yeah, he's had to. But I feel like he's been he, solid. He's too. comfortable at the four though. Yeah, he's shown to be. I mean, he's DPOY at the four, which is kind of why I was just trying to find a spot that Stephen it's Adams hard. just got traded to Houston. But uh, yeah, it is it is tough, and I feel like you're right. Rockets definitely best situation. But if a, a team that comes to mind, I mean, you add a little bit of offense there with with the Grizzlies. That's always been kind of their their big question. It's yeah. it's Ja, it's Bain. Who else can can well, I rely on to cooking. get some points? Oh. No, but for sure. But yeah, shout out to Paul Masai King, a la George. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another game I wanted to talk about: Pacers Heat. This was kind of the deciding factor. He got factor. cheated, allegedly. Yeah, low-key. Uh, low yeah. Now, I was watching the game. That game yeah. was kind of nuts. Um, Pacers win 117 to 115. They were in control. They were up, I think. Sorry. That was so Damn. Did you have to do that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It was bothering me. Okay. Pacers were up 12 in the fourth, maybe as much as 15 in the fourth. He did make it interesting at the end. Um, Jimmy Butler had a, another Jimmy Butler quote after the game and said, <laughs> if, we wind up, if we end up in the play-in, we end up in the play-in. We've never made it easy. Why make it easy He's now? So funny. Yeah. Legend. Um, he was on a horse last week. Yeah, the Pacers have basically a, they basically have a two-game lead over the Heat now because they own the tiebreaker over them. They're one game up in terms of like win-loss column. But this would have been a big game for the Heat. Uh, you know, if you're able to get into that top six seed and now – Although you're, you know, probably don't want to play, uh, you could win and not and avoid Boston still. But if you get to that sixth seed, you definitely avoid Boston in the first round. Now you're guaranteed more or less to be in the play-in. You're going up against the Philly team who 
has a chance to win out. But even if they win out, the Pacers win a couple games down the stretch. They're going to clinch that sixth seed. Yeah. So it's probably going to be Miami and um, and Philadelphia to be that first kind of seven seed. And the way Miami's been playing all season long, really, not just even like really stretches all season long, I've not felt that same sense of... Uh, championship material eight seed making a cinderella run ain't feel I, it last year i i didn't feel it last year but Damn. if they managed you to didn't win either. Stop if they managed, no i didn't Stop if they managed that. to win the alone. first playing game and you play the bucks instead of the celtics anything's on the table but if i'm a heat fan i don't like the idea of we have to play a hot philly team with a healthy Embiid, potentially lose right. now beat the God forbid, or hope at least you beat the Hawks or the Bulls because last season you damn near lost to them um, and play against Boston they round choked. one. That hurt. Might have beat us in seven like last shit. year, but that shouldn't happen For that, again. though, masterclass. Of course. Yeah. When we did our top five players under the most pressure, Jimmy Butler did not make a list. No. He won't. But why isn't he under more pressure? Because the Heat aren't that good. He's a reason for that. Um, in a regular season, yes them not winning. No. He, it's yeah. not like he's playing at an all NBA no, no. level. Here's a, here's expectations for the Here's Heat the thing too. with Jimmy. He's also played 56 games. Like, he's missed a good amount of time. What's the record when he does play? All right, let's see that. The thing with Jimmy That's is gonna Jim, be interesting. Jimmy gets to pass because of what he did last year and what he does every other playoffs is he just goes nuclear. He also got swept in the That's first That's what I said round. every other yeah, mm-hmm. every other year. Because what, so what if this, this year, year? This might be the off year. So what if this year he gets swept in the first round? Like, why are we holding? Who are they, who are they playing? When, they, when he's played. They're playing the Heat of the Bucks. Or excuse me, the Celtics, the Bucks. In the fifty-six Celtics, games, he's thirty and twenty-six. Thirty and twenty-six. That's not, that's I don't even need to do the it's math. Not that on great. That. Yeah, yeah no. it's a uh, very much barely. It's a fifty-four one like, percent. Why isn't he under more pressure? Because I understand we you look at this. Top five we pressure? look at this Miami Heat era and we say they have overachieved. They have made the championship. Yes, that is kind of this era's version of the two thousand Nets, mm-hmm. who made the finals twice and lost both times. We can praise the run that nobody expected, while also saying. This, this is not getting done. They not finishing the story. They're losing. What, what is what is the heat expectation to you? And they were in a, they were the first seed the the year that the Celtics beat them. I was gonna say in Game three of, in, in three of the four the years. Seven. It's fucking fluke last year. Three of the four years that he's been there, <laughs> you have a finals run in the bubble twice. You have losing in the first round. Swept. He got swept. ECF got worked. He got outplayed by Bryn Forbes. Correct. Listen, this is life. Bryn Forbes was the best player in the in the series, better than Giannis. Right, so are we going to do that? No, he wasn't. Uh, obviously, he, he's what Burn Forbes yes. did score yes. more yes. than he uh, did play. Yes. He did. Play, he did <laughs> score so more than Jimmy. Year after that, Jimmy Butler, ECF. fucking amazing, played hurt. ECF one shot away. Next year, finals. finals. What is? What are we really saying? That what's he, your definition of a su- su- successful? Oh, you know season? me. You know me. So this this been a failure. But he never had it a better not. team. Yeah, that's a successful. It that's a successful to near. No, but me. he's played well. A successful. What? The team <laughs> failed. But I'm saying you have gone. Close Tenure. to a championship. Yes. At some point, when are we going to start placing pressure on you to finally win well, it? When has he because ever I had feel, the better team? I feel team. like every star player, I mean, you could say that for a lot of star players that have never won a championship. Yeah. They have not had the better teams, I but agree. that does not mean that like people did not put pressure on them to win. You know, that's it. That like, Paul good. George got more pressure than Jimmy Butler. Paul George had a better team. Right now? Yes, yes, yes. Right now, it is a better team, but right now, there's more pressure on Paul George, who's not because even Because Paul George chokes more than Jimmy Butler in the playoffs. That's a fact. There's more pressure on Kevin Durant than Jimmy. Yes, because Kevin Durant, like you told me before, you told me on a playback, rings are fake. You t- he's <laughs> yeah. a champion, though. Yeah, and but, he's he's all right. higher all time than Jimmy Butler. But he has pressure easily. to win as the man. That's the it's thing. like why there's nobody that ever gives Jimmy but KD like, also, pressure. But KD also forced his way out of Brooklyn, went to the Suns, brings in Bradley Beal. Jimmy Butler's just been in Miami for the and last And Jimmy Butler five always years. got quotes that they've had to win and they don't. he doesn't care. Does he's Miami win have the team to win a championship? Have they ever had a team? They have the team to be better than an eighth seed in the in the East. But have they ever had a team you, to win a championship? You could argue the year that they lost to the Celtics, they had a team to win the championship. Who who, the, uh, who came out that year? That the, the Warriors. Warriors. Boston Warriors, yeah. We would have beat them in five. I think the Warriors would have won. I think yeah. so too. I mean, it was a seven game series with the Celtics. Six. No, no, he's seven. talking about he Warriors. Oh, Warriors, yes. Celtics, I'm talking about. No, I understand. Yeah, yeah. This, I think that the Celtics were the better team with, than Miami, for sure. At the same time, I don't think Miami, that I Miami, think Miami team more, had heart. They, yeah, that, yeah, that's they, heart. And, and Spo in a finals performs yeah. well better than Ime did. they were did. talented to win. I'm just saying, like, part of the reason why 
we don't look highly of the heat from a roster perspective is because they're so underwhelming in the regular season. Yes. The, the reason why we don't look at them like a top team is because they play like a mid team in the regular season. But then in the playoffs, they take it to another level and we start respecting them. We all come into the season. I can guarantee half the heat is a top five team in the East from a standard perspective yeah, sure. and they have underachieved. Yes. So I'm just saying like he also adds to the perception that they're not as talented because he is not living up to his expectation in a regular season. And we even gave them the benefit of the doubt coming into this season because I don't remember exactly where we had them, but I remember saying, like, that he should probably be a top four seed, but knowing they don't take it seriously, they'll probably finish at five or six. I don't think they'd be in the play again, but the fact that they went to the finals after being the play-in last season doesn't help the argument yeah. because if Jimmy Butler and the Heat just go out there and they make they win a playoff series, they win two, go to the ECF again, it's like – I mean, you should take it serious, but if you're going to do this every formula, year, yeah. it's their formula. Because it's like if they lose in the first round this year, now you have in the in the five years you lost in a in the first round twice. You made two finals runs, and then you made the conference finals. I would love once. that. I'm no, it kind of it kind of evens out the era, back. though. It kind of no evens race. it out. You lost to Denver, and then you lost to the Lakers. Yeah, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine with that. You lost to two teams that were better than you. The Lakers in the bubble were by far better and than And then the you guys just told me that if they would have beat the Celtics and gone to the finals versus the Warriors, you think they would have lost in five. I so, said that. Or regardless. I think they would have lost it. They, that you think the Warriors, regardless, five. would have won. That's me. My point being is, to add to, to yours, they wouldn't have been favored in any of these finals matchups. That's not the point, though. Like, the, the point is not if they're going to be favored or not. But Jimmy played well against the Lakers. It's, he yeah, no, he and did. He, and he did it under man. No Bam, Denver? no Gorn. Ah, he didn't, yeah, no. No one played well. He did, no, but Bam did. Bam, you're right. Respect. Fine. Apologize. Best don't want to disrespect also, him. It's also every. It doesn't even if you don't have the better team. That Denver I series. Did he, did, he just the did, did he play well? Who did he play well? Bam played amazing. Well, for the fact that Jokic still gave. What the fuck? Jokic did him. Jokic killed AD. Jimmy had ten well, points. I don't think AD played well. Six, but Bam played well. Show some respect. He Jimmy had best. ten points in Game Six in a bubble versus the Heat. I mean, versus the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had a shooter. He did six. have a 30-point triple-double. Six, and then mistake. the last he game, the, the elimination game, the final game, he shit at the best. He was gassed. He Again, was he, had, he didn't have his second or third best player. And then the very next year in the first round, he was trash. But then the year after, they came back, ECF run, and he has while won the championship, he was injured. Yeah. And then he, oh, he right. wasn't even that good in the finals. This isn't fair. This past year. Well, like, I, I don't understand. Like, every other star player gets critiqued like in his way. Like who? But Jimmy Butler just gets a pass. Name a star player that you're upset like that Dame, gets re- Dame gets has critiqued. never done anything of what Jimmy Butler has. I know. Dame should get more disrespect well, than Dame what, was than top, what number, Jimmy does. Dame was two on my list of pressure. Dame got a lot of pressure Dame's on him. Dame's got a ton he of got pressure. more pressure than Jimmy. Right, well, so then if... I think the whole point of that is to say there are star players that are in far worse positions Jimmy is than Jimmy. Jimmy is overachieving a lot of the time with these teams. That's a fact. The fact that he's overachieving is, why, is yes. why we're in this position. But like, you've been there. It's like if you underachieve He's in only season, overachieving relative to his underachieving in the regular season. If they were better in the regular general, season, though, we like, wouldn't look at them as overachievers. I feel like every offseason, though, we do, no, none of us have them even as a top contender. Because, because the Bucks... In. We when, probably had them as a top four or five seed in preseason. Because let me, let me ask year, you this. Year, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. When the Bucks, when Giannis was first winning MVPs, mm-hmm. they were a team that they were always a great regular season team, and they disappointed in the playoffs. Sure. And that's what led to... The memes about Giannis in the playoffs, about B- B- Mike Budenholzer, and then they finally make that finals run to get over the hump, right? But I'm saying that to say that you are only perceived as overachieving if there's an initial period where you're not meeting expectations. Mm-hmm. With the Bucks, they overachieved in the regular season, and then they came back to earth kind of in the playoffs. I think we would all view the Heat as a great team. We all view them as a great team. They were just the first seed in the East two years ago. Mm-hmm. The fact that in back-to-back seasons they have been a playing team has been underachieving. Again, they have been injured. Jimmy has missed a good amount of time. But you told Tyler me the record Hero, with Jimmy Butler. Correct. It's, not, it's, it's 500. Okay. Tyler Maybe Hero, Atlanta Hawks. Tyler Hero has also missed so much more than, than half Hawks. of this season, too. I mean, that that's yeah, two of their three best Hero. players. It's healthy, tough. But it's tough. It is, but then other players that... I just don't want us to get they called got the voodoo that we get called in talking about this team. Regular no, season, for we talk, sure. and then the playoffs, they do that some scored magic. 70 See, points on the something. thing is, you could say Jimmy Butler has pressure. I'm not going to say he doesn't have pressure, but you, we we had a whole segment, and you had, you had your moment to say Jimmy Butler's yeah, top of five in pressure. He, he wasn't even in anyone's matrix. Because I was thinking about it, and I was just like... Is he top five? We I, I would put him on top five Devin now. Booker or him? Jimmy. Why? To win a championship. Really? 
Devin Booker has been to the finals too. Jimmy has more pressure with this team to win a championship. We just spoke about it. Devin, this team got more depth than the Suns. Devin, they got a better Devin Kevin Booker, Durant in the trade for Bradley. Devin Bill. Booker played so Bradley bad. Bradley Bill not even as good as Terry Rozier right now. Ah, what did you just say again? They ah, similar. Would you say Jimmy and and, and no, Bradley, no, Bradley Bill? Oh, apologize. No, nah, I would take Bradley Bill pretty comfortably, respectfully to to Terry, who's been playing some really good ball. Um, at the same time, Devin Booker played so bad in the game seven that the. the Organization had an issue an apology to the fans. Last year he played some well, also awesome, okay, it was can, a can whole I finish team. speaking? Last year he played some pretty awesome ball before that injury. Game game six versus the Nuggets. Obviously he was injured, did not play well. And you talk about it. Didn't even met, didn't address the media. You, that I mean, he has demons that he has Don't forget, to conquer. Went to the finals and none of their star players in that run they, were healthy. Yeah, blew a 2-0 lead also, right? They were up 2-0. They could have easily put it away. He played he played. Pretty well in that finals. 240 balls. He played well, but since then has, let me not say struggled because he was pretty damn great last year in the playoffs, but he went out sorry. How many times has D-Book had the team that can go to that can win the championship? Okay, the favorite? year that they lost in seven to the Mavericks, and they were the best Bucks team in basketball. Last year? This year? They got Kevin Durant. This year? Wait, what do you mean by this no, year? Last year, he's saying. Last oh, year, saying, but even yeah. when you trade for Kevin Durant and you trade for Bradley Beal, you're looking at as a championship contender. Yeah, he's right. Chris Paul got hurt he's right. in the second I'm round. And this then year, though. No, this year, there's no doubt. But this year, they've been inconsistent. I'm not going to disagree with you right now, but I think we all have a perception of the Suns, and it's not a team that's going to win a championship. Also, no, because they've Kevin, Kevin Durant us. has more pressure than Jimmy Butler also. And are the Heat not disappointing us right now? Correct. I, I'm not. I don't disagree. Yeah, so with that's that. all. It, that's but who's all more I'm of a disappointment, about. the Suns or the Heat? Comparatively, they equal. No, disagree. the West is much disagree. tougher. Disagree. And the, the Suns have the, had injuries. But the Suns too. have two top five scorers in the NBA, and, and no they depth. have another really good. Pl- Agreed. But that was the issue coming in. And we, but you even have with the, you even have with a trio. The we have but you top have a four. trio. Frank Vogel's not the worst coach. He is no, worse than Spo, but bad. Vogel's still a good coach in his but own Spoh's right. But the best coach. Correct. It's the levels. But, but again, there's been injuries to the Miami Heat. Their best player has so, been injured. So, and that the Suns too, there's and been injuries. Kevin Durant has played Hulk. almost the entirety of the there's season. There's been injuries to Beal Devin, and Booker. But Devin that Booker has played is, almost 60 games. That definitely is a because the players on Miami are only good some and you were gassing up the Suns' depth. <laughs> the whole offseason, you were gassing up the Suns' depth. Shout yeah, out to I had faith. Theo, of course, I, was, I, I had faith. Well, Shout out to you, Juan Anabe. Oh, uh, Jordan Goodwin. Jordan Goodwin. He didn't make but it. But this is the thing that I'm saying is like, with the, with the the you're talking about De- Devin Booker versus Shout Jimmy Butler to, to stay on, that, to stay on that conversation. And KD. You can also throw him in that conversation. But KD is a champion. He don't got more pressure than Jimmy he to does, win. He does, though. He no, does, though. He does Jimmy the same way that good. Steph had pressure to win a championship post Kevin Durant left, yes. is the same if KD pressure that KD today, does. Is he a first battle Hall of Famer? Absolutely. Absolutely. End of discussion. So no, is Jimmy Butler. No, he's not. He's not a first battle Hall of Famer. What? No, wait, wait, wait. What? Vince Carter just got his resume. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me look. If he's a first battle Hall of Famer, Famer? Famer? It's the Basketball Hall of Fame. Jimmy then, Butler then there's something is wrong with the Hall of Fame. He's a first there's Battle Hall of Famer. Been yeah, we've been, we've been known that, what? There's we've been, been something that. wrong. <laughs> Jimmy that. Butler is first ballot. All right, yes. So Vince Carter, eight-time All-Star. He has two All-NBA teams. Okay. Wow. He just got in first ballot. Yes, I believe. Uh, yeah, Vince Jimmy's cooked. He has, a, he has a great <laughs> college career, too. So I'm saying cooked, and he's getting in. Eight-time All-Star, two-time Olympia. Okay. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Butler, NBA, Jimmy Butler at the age teams. of 30. Well, he's 34, if I'm not mistaken. 30, yeah, 33, 34. He's 34. He has, he's a six-time All-Star. He is a five-time All-NBA, five-time, five-time All-Defense. Most improved. Most improved. He's ECF. Getting, he, he, he has a ECF MVP also. He has the Larry Bird two Trophy. Finals, That's yes. huge. Definitely got to count that in there. He's locked in. Come, come on, it's bro. It's the basketball. Hall of it's very easy It's to basketball. Get it. Yeah. We're not disagreeing. It's, it's, it's shit fucked up. He's not a first ballot Hall of Fame player, though. Oh, yeah. No, Cook. he's not. No, he's basketball. <laughs> no, he's Cook. not. No, he's not. Cook, Joel. <laughs> no, he's not. There's a lot of those bums in first ballot. Easy. That Calm be down with the bum ballot. shit. Calm no, down not. with the bum no, shit. shit. Respect to y'all. Yes, but yes. some of y'all shouldn't be first ballot. First ballot should be reserved for the greats. I agree. Jimmy Butler's not a. He's not one of the greats. I agree. What the fuck are we talking about? Not one of the greats. No, no he's not. Interesting. No, he's yeah. not. Oh, Jimmy Butler's not one of the greats. He's a good player. He's not one of the greats. Good player for That's not crazy. He's, like he's dope. He's not even top 50, 50 player all time. Is he top 75? Not. He, no, he he's might not be. Than, he's better than Bob Petit. Come on, stop. 
But relative to what they did in the era, relative to the same. No, he is. I love that. Player for player, of course, but like relative to what they did in that era, I mean, that's where the conversation starts. You them dudes, you know. I mean, yeah. Kevin Durant has more pressure, bro. It's okay. If you want to go by the for the NBA Hall of Fame standards, I that's that's on you. That's a nation. That's on me. That's just what's gonna happen, Joel. Don't hit that. You can't say who has more pressure based on who's gonna make the first battle Hall of Fame. Jimmy, no, no. Not first ballot. He's not like when I look at a first ballot Hall of Fame level player, it's not he's like, Jimmy Butler. He's like year four. It's a it's a slow second class ballot? that year, maybe. No, I think Jimmy is in that second, third ballot. He's okay. in between. Not wrong with that. Let me ask you a question. First That's ballot. Player still. Hall of Fame. But I understand if Vince Carter just got in. Then Chauncey that's respect. Got Chauncey's more of a Hall of Famer than Jimmy, in my opinion. The Finals MVP Champ, in the yeah. ring. I get all that. Champ. You know? Champ. Shout, shout out to Chauncey. Man. Shout out to fucking Chauncey, man. Shame we had to beat him. So, so Jimmy Bell has more pressure than Kevin Durant at this point in time today. Yes. To win. They just the made the team. finals. And then they, they might it's lose the, in the first the round. It's the way Kevin Durant's been doing this jumping left and right to all these different teams. And he's got KD and excuse me, he's got Beal and Booker there now. Jimmy Butler's just been chilling in Miami saying, you bring me whoever you want to bring. Bring whatever role players and rookies. I'm going to make this work. So who will be your top five now that you added Jimmy? The best player that they added to the Heat since Jimmy's been there, by the way, just take take note of this. Right, Terry Rozier. It's Terry Rozier. Yeah. He's the best player they've added they've since been he's trying. been there. Tommy's been pretty damn good too. No, I just Rookie mean in terms of drafted. trades. Oh, you're fair. Yeah, yeah, like they really haven't been active but in that regard. So, yeah, I'm saying Tommy could be the second yeah, best. Yeah, that's a fact yeah. too. They've developed Respect. players though. Bam. Out of Wait, he was he was there already though. No, but you said Jaime could be the second best. No, that no, he I'm was saying, while oh, he's yeah, in there. Yeah, well, obviously, obviously, of course, Bam's the best. He, you know how he gets sometimes with his heat. I feel like Bam fucks with JT. Yeah. I fuck with Bam. I feel like, like, fuck with yeah. fuck with I feel like it's, you, it's I know, universal yeah, I fuck to Bam. fuck with Bam. No, it has to be. Can't wait. He's a cool dude. He's about to grind. He's not gonna be a Celtic, bro. I think number one is Tatum. Number two is Dame. Number three is between SJ and Butler. It's a conversation. I'll go SG at three because he got to prove himself in the playoffs. Kevin Booker, please. At number four, it's probably Jimmy Butler. Mm. Book's got more pressure than KD. Mm, probably not. I would say I think KD is probably higher than Book. I think Book can should argue, have more pressure. Can than argue KD. KD at three? You really like could. K- KD right now, t- how I view him, he's still a great player. He's also thirty-five years old. But he's been—he's like, pl- he's not supposed to be carrying a team. But he's been having one of his best seasons of his career. So we do that now. We like, do that now. I mean. Steph, do that what's, now. Steph, what's Steph doing? What's LeBron doing? Steph has pressure. What's going on? Of course. Steph got, Steph got pressure. Every time always. LeBron... Ha- no, there's always going to be no, pressure No, no, but he said top five pressure. Yeah. Said top, no, we no, talking no, about no, top no, five no. pressure. But when you win... That's the thing. Kevin Durant's had pressure since he's left Golden State. I think Kyrie I mean, probably four. But yeah, but LeBron and he Steph don't have pressure because they're cemented as top 10 all time type shit. Loki, Loki, Loki. No, the only and Katie's top there, twelve. All there time. are top three, fifteen. There, he, but there are three superstars that don't, don't have matter. pressure. He's a top thirteen Steph, player. It's LeBron. Ever. It's Jokic. They don't have pressure. Why? You put him in that conversation too. But how much? What? How much changes for KD? I don't want to get the the typical podcast shit. But how much does KD's legacy change if no, he wanted to ship with his son's team? Luca doesn't have pressure. If he goes right. and, and somehow beats Luka Denver, have pressure. he somehow goes and beats Boston. Does Luca have like, more pressure than Jimmy? Ooh. Luka's on his way to fucking go territory. That means the right? pressure has to go up high. Right? OD. Yeah. I'm so I mean, much this, better this than is him, the best chance that's, he's that's got. Why. That's why, yeah. You okay. know, like, a, a lot of the, the best players got the most pressure. For sure. Because they're better. For sure. That's know? exactly why yeah, I no, mentioned him. Nobody's got pressure on fucking Harrison Barnes. I don't know. No. Like, <laughs> but to what you were saying about KD, I think KD could win another championship being a guy. He still won't be top 10 all time. He's still going to stay where he stays. But if he wins the a ring, post Steph, around his we're name. calm. Even if it, the ranking doesn't change from 12 honest, to 10. 12, what's the conversation around 12. his name? Because the only people that are making such a huge fuss about his legacy and where he stands are just fans. Amongst the basketball community and, oh. and basketball players, they all hold KD to the highest regard. hold T-Mac very high. That doesn't mean much. Okay, but huh? in reality... No, no, no. But people do hold KD to Kevin a high Murray regard. He might not be top 12 all the time. Ooh. He might not. Why not? <laughs> I think you, when you look at that right now, it. the Joker might pass him oh my God. literally fast. Cooking. Yeah. Giannis might pass He's him literally fast. Giannis, Giannis, probably not. That's a wait and see. I don't know. Giannis, Giannis beat two MVP. Giannis got DPOI. KD in the series. He has a ring. KD had no help. And honestly, bro, you can't do the whole like around the Jim NBA Tony shit. Yo, yeah. also, what do you mean? They all they all because, they because honestly, bro, the way how we all say Tatum has the most pressure, which I agree. On a couple episodes ago with J.J., LeBron was saying, look how much Tatum has won. I didn't win a ring until I was 28. He's only 26. He already been to the finals. Oh, my God. Like, the people in the He's NBA are going to have, around the they're gonna have more the respect. Fucking. They're going to have more respect for players, which is fine. They should. You have a point. 
But when LeBron was talk- <laughs> but LeBron, but LeBron was talking about LeBron was talking about how what Tatum has done has been elite. Yeah, that's what he's done. Yeah, the reason why there's pressure on Tatum is because he stunk it up in his first finals, and he has the best team in the league right now. That's why there's pressure for him to win a championship. But I'm just each saying, time Katie has been in the finals, he's put up historic performances. But I'm just saying around the league, people would be like, "Well, yeah, Tatum's got pressure, but he's 26. He's won more than a ton of people in this league, even though he doesn't have a chip yet. He's going to have this team for another year or two. Like around the league, people are going to give more grace to players. And I feel like there are more players that are still waiting for Tatum to take that leap than they are criticizing Kevin Durant because with Tatum, it's not with Tatum It's more. So can you take that leap to be the best player on a championship team and will that team? That's the leap that people are waiting for that. We have yet to see yet. Like KD has proved think, himself think as think number Tatum's one. Dude. KD went, when he went to the finals, he went through a gauntlet in the West and then he lost to LeBron well, look, in his prime. Didn't Giannis take Tatum number one in the fantasy draft? He's got respect in the league. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave that at that. <laughs> but KD, KD went through a gauntlet. He only lost to the big three Miami team. That, that That's what yeah, happened. But Kate, Steph. Look how far and you have Katie to was, pull but, that up the ass. But, but, but okay, but that was, that was around the time that the age that Tatum's at right now, though. Yeah, you but know, again, he went to the finals. He lost to, to a top 10 player in Steph Curry. They were favored in that finals. The Celtics were. Yeah. Not by Vegas, though. Yeah, no, we weren't. The ESPN is ball knowers. 96%. Ball knowers do. What you mean? Only us two on the table picked the when Warriors. I was, I, 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 he wasn't even here. I respected you. You don't forget all, when Pee Wee was on here and I was the only the one. The Warriors are going against the 96%. Sorry, bro. I'm sorry. To, that, that, sorry I'll be honest. Too. They could go up against the dream team. Dells is picking the Celtics. Can't forget that. I remember that like he was fucking yesterday. That's when the table was still vertical. When we had Pee Wee on the show, you two, you three all pick on state, and it was a 3v1 tag team against me. No pause. Bro things about that night. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we know, bro. Since that's offseason. Listen, when it comes they to were the favorites. The Warriors were the favorites. ESPN did some dumb shit. Like, he always mentions 81% chance to no, win. No, it's like 96. Yeah, but but all sports books had the Warriors favored. It, was, it wasn't it was crazy favorite. It was like minus 120 or some shit. It wasn't like some minus 500. But, but y'all dad could have won had, had Tatum performed better. I don't disagree. Like, it wasn't a situation where LeBron ran into San Antonio, a team that clearly also overmatched think him and didn't play drop coverage against Steph Curry the whole series, maybe go seven. No, maybe, yeah. But also, Tatum's own performances cost y'all. And also, if we don't blow that, was it game four when we're up in the fourth quarter by four or six points? And, you know, well, we blew game one, so we're even. You did, well, we just hit every fucking three in the fourth quarter game one. Thinking about say. it, thinking about it, I'll say this. Jimmy wouldn't be in my top five. Because I think somebody like Donovan Mitchell has more pressure to him because he got to perform because it's been a while since he performed at a high level in the playoffs. But my initial point, though, that I want to just finish off with, I want to conclude with this, is that uh-huh. the Miami Heat, the only reason they over overachieve in the playoffs is because they underachieve so much in a regular season to a point that they're not supposed to. They're supposed to every year with the roster they've had be a top five team in the East at minimum. <sighs> It's tough, man. You have young teams getting good. The Magic is higher than them. The Nobody, Magics are a good team. You would have put them over the heat before the of season? Of course not Come preseason. On. Not. Of course not preseason. That's what I'm saying. Like, this but you, is a- Okay, let me let me give you a counterintuitive argument then. Look at... Look at uh, OKC, Thunder. right? Would you have had them in the? Did you have them in the top six? I remember being the only person to have OKC we in the have, top we six. We definitely had the young Lakers teams over him. We had the Suns it over them. No, no, right? Did you have OKC over the Suns? No way. But let me ask you this then. The Los Angeles Lakers, they're in the playing. They have underachieved this regular season, correct? I I don't. They have. I guess the by, by their by by if definition, the Lakers, in we've your actually opinion, played good ba- basketball. If we were on the other side, we'd be locked top six. The West is amazing. You're not okay. And if y'all make a conference finals run, would you be shocked? Would you say that's an we did, overachieving we did it last season? Year. Uh, overachieving I season. I call it overachieving. Uh, we're the Lakers. We they went LeBron to the WCF last year. We all thought they had a and, great and Le- offseason. And LeBron was hurt, and we went to the WCF. The Miami Heat last year just made the finals. If they overachieved. They, if they don't do anything less than make the conference finals, it's a disappointment of the year. I don't care about where think, the seeding is. They would think it. They would think it. They would too. Like the, the fact that they have they underachieved so much in a regular season oh. is why we are so shocked by the playoff stuff. But they shouldn't be underachieving this bad in regular season to begin with. They should be much Again, better. In like regular I said, season. they've been hurt though. The, so have the Magic. The Magic have been hurt. Paolo has been relatively healthy, but everybody around him has kind of been hurt. Have they? The Knicks have been hurt. That's another. The Cavs were hurt. They went on a win streak. 
But again, we've seen the, the conference be volatile. Played less than the Magic only together. rose to three recently. They only talk about that. Joe Mazzola okay, the year. and the Heat are not one of those teams that have been rising. They mm-hmm. could have been rising too. So we're talking about the 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 Magic, the Knicks, the Cavs have all suffered injuries, but the Miami Heat, they gain an injury who, excuse this who year. Who on the Magic has been injured? Wendell, Wendell Carter missed some time, but I feel like that's been that's been standard. Give me a second. Let me Markel make sure. Foltz missed some time. Then Anthony You'll Black live started. With that. You'll live Jonathan with that. Jonathan Isaac ain't played a whole season either. But that's something that they've dealt with for th- three seasons. Yeah, but a big reason Wait, why they're so healthy, great at defense been... is because he's elite. Uh, let me that's see. tough because Suggs has yeah, Paulo's please. played 76. Okay. Suggs, 71. Franz, 70. But then no one else has played more than 45. Wendell's at 45. So all the role players has been hurt. You but tell the me, big three. Okay, but you tell me no, for the Lakers, I... role players are hurt. And that's why y'all okay. in this season. Or excuse right. me. My apologies. I was okay. looking at games started, not Thank games you. played. Um mm-hmm. Cole Anthony's the most of 77. Mo Wagner, 76. Paulo, 76. Sug, 71. Franz, 71. Okay, Black, difference. 66. Angle, Differ- 64. They starting the lineup is, is a guy as a different Isaac, guy out of time. 54. Tom. Wendell, 51. Yeah, I mean, that's... Fultz is at 39. Come Harry on, Harris, bro. 51. Come on. Go what? Out of the lineup at this what do you mean? They're not really an injured team. They're I mean, not they're an not an injured team. team. Like, Look at the Miami Heat's games played. Paulo, Jalen, Franz. Jimmy is at 56. What's Bam. Oh, Bam has played almost every game, but Tyler Hero's at under forty. I don't understand. I just gave you their second and third best player, un- top two of their well, top Tyler three Hero, players. They made a run without him last year. Agreed. So, so they should probably still be a great regular season team without him. But Tyler Hero's still a, a good run. ball player, man. So, but the reason why your injury argument falls on deaf ears, how? Because they aren't they don't good have when their best they're player. healthy. Jimmy Butler, when you told me he plays, they're uh-huh. thirty and twenty six. Yes. Uh-huh. So. Automatically, I mean, so that goes out the Jaime's window. Played 71, Duncan 68, Bam 67, Hayward Heisman 62, Kayla Martin 60, Butler 56, Kevin Love 51. Everyone else is 43 or below. You got Tyler Hero at 38. Um, Terry Tyler has been pretty, yeah, yeah since being there, acquired. I mean, Correct. Don't really have a lot of but your best guys. player and your third best player have missed a good amount of time. But when Jimmy plays, he's 30 and 26. So even if you're using an injury argument when they're healthy, they're still not a top five but team. But again, in the missing East. enough time where listen, consistency matters. How many teams in the East have had consistency all year? The Cavs haven't had it. The Knicks haven't had Correct. it. Correct, and we've seen we've seen the Cavs drop. But right now they're Celtics top five. Haven't had it. Celtics haven't had it. They've been one of the few lucky ones. No, the Bucks haven't fines, had it. They're second team. Together. Okay, exactly my point. That, so right? why so why should I not expect the Heat to be higher? Well, Celtics aren't five. Oh, you can expect them together. to be higher. That's really? fine. Why should I give them the injury excuse? Because their best player has been hurt. Coach Mazzulli, a man. lot of games. It works. I don't know. Are, are you giving a team an injury excuse when they're thirty and twenty six when a star player plays? <laughs> no. uh, they should be better than where they're at. I think. No. Oh, they should be better than Especially they are. Especially yeah. when that you have a Pacers right team who's with Tyrese has been struggling, a young Magic team who've been playing sensational, but I think you should, you know, be right in that conversation. They're basically locked in to be the seventh seed. I think it's very unlikely they get to six or eight. Them them losing to the Pacers definitely put them in a precarious Jimmy that situation. Game? Jimmy played yeah, that game. I think game. he did. Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah, and they still ain't win. They still been mid win. <laughs> it was, so I, it was a two point game. Yeah, but they was down by like ten in the yeah, fourth. They, they were down. They were down double digits in the fourth. Came back. They've been low key not been a good fourth quarter team. Good no, they team. haven't been yeah. at all. But the Pacers have now. also been a pretty shitty clutch team recently. We haven't talked about this yet on the show, but would you believe me if I told you that the Magic, who have or are in the third seed, have three more wins than the Miami Heat? The third seed and where the Heat are are decided by three games. Not the East is kind of mid. I agree. Maybe if you was but had East it. is this mid and the Heat we think are one of Again, these teams. Again, but they've been they've been hurt, and yeah, I don't think they're one of these teams personally. It still I don't goes see a back finals to run. Do we, a do thirty we not and twenty six record when they play coming into the season? Probably, top, probably five. top five, lock top six, lock top six lock for sure. But I'm not saying, winning with Jimmy on the court though. We probably had the they're Celtics, Bucks, Sixers locked over them. For, mm-hmm. Knicks probably, maybe Cavs probably, maybe. Without Harden, Maybe. probably true. Yeah, we didn't know what we were gonna have mm-hmm. Harden. That's fair. So but we got to talk yeah. about this because go. the Lakers are actively avoiding the the Nuggets in the bracket. We LeBron smoke. ain't play yesterday against the Wolves. Well, he was actually <laughs> sick, and that's, AD that's got poked in the eye. Yeah, full okay. like symptoms. I don't know. It, the the, 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 AD got violated. <laughs> yeah, 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 and honestly, is, it was a it was a game when AD was playing. This is the best plan of action for the Lakers, though, to actively avoid the Nuggets. In the well, we don't know where the Nuggets are going to finish yet, do we? We Does don't. Yeah, but right now they're the second for. seed. They're the third or second seed. No, it's, this is no, no, two. I don't know. I don't know if the Lakers are actively trying to do this. Same thing. Like, are the Bucks actively trying to lose to avoid Miami? Like, we don't know. Actively ducking. 
I feel like there's just too much going on. You got to go out there and try to win every game, especially if you're, okay. if you're the Lakers. You could potentially get or lock yourself into a home game that first time in the play, and I think that's more important. Yeah, and honestly, we had a chance at the six seed if we win yesterday's game. That's not even me trying to make a joke. We legitimately could have been the six seed, play against Oklahoma City, and if you're the Lakers, who we've played against OKC, amazing all season long. One of the few teams that has a winning record against them on the season. I'm sure we would have tried to do that. That's what you won in the first round. I don't think that we were actively trying to lose. Legitimately think LeBron was sick. We know that we can beat Minnesota. We have in the past. We have this season multiple times. I don't think that we were actively trying to avoid them more so. Unfortunate that AD gets poked in the eye. Unfortunate that LeBron wasn't feeling well. I think we could have won this game. We've been playing amazing basketball since 2024 has started. We have one of the best win percentages since the 2024 year started. We just have been in a stacked West, and we just can only climb so much because these other teams are winning almost just as much as us. Yeah, you know, since the new year, the just Mavericks had to shut have that been, down real quick. The, but Mavericks have been awesome. No, I'm not saying that the Lakers are avoiding facing the Timberwolves. I'm saying they're trying to avoid facing the Nuggets in the first no, round. No, I, I heard you there. But again, like I said, I don't think we were trying to lose yesterday. Okay. No. Okay. Well, y'all lost anyway. They and uh, the I, Mavericks, what the fuck is that for? One forty-seven, <laughs> one thirty-six win over the Rockets. That was a comeback that was a great win. Shout out to Dante, 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 Dante Exum with Dante. the icer man. To go into overtime and he then you just have Kyrie take, take it over. <laughs> <laughs> that was a hilarious tweet. Yeah. Rip looked up from his laptop and said, whoop, talking about my guy. No, yeah, that's SGA hilarious. Now, so I, I want to know where no, he's yeah, staying. Mavericks Twitter, they're running with that. But listen, the Mavericks continue to play really well. The most, uh, the best part about how they're winning right now is that PJ's hand shots, playing good defense. Derrick Jones Jr. playing some elite level defense. He just got to hit some shots, really. I feel like their big men the are set. Them. They really need mm-hmm. Derek Lively back. That's what yeah. I'm going to say. Because the Gafford minutes are not enough. They need Derek Lively back. They got the centers figured out. Kyrie and Luka. I mean, they're looking like a top three duo in basketball. They're Kyrie. playing that great. You saw Kyrie just named player of the week? He deserved he's, it. He's been playing some yeah. unbelievable basketball all season long. And, and again, he kind of goes under the radar because all people care about is Luka Doncic. I've been with LeBron, too. Don't do that. Don't the sleeping on Kyrie Irving is dumb. It's never been a good idea. He's going to go out there and he's going to ball. But again, what matters is the postseason for sure. I'm down, excited. They were down 15 in the first quarter of this game. They had to come back, mm-hmm. made it, made a game. Then the fourth quarter, it looked like they were dead to rights. Dante Jabari hits a big it. shot. Jabari did miss two free throws. That if you just make one, game's over. Misses both. He gets a rebound he down that. the shot. Tragic. They trap Luca, or I don't know. He gets stuck like basically around half court. Dante's wide open. Hits the three, and then overtime they I'm just decided to run. Luca was going for that fake, and then you're right. The two defenders came towards Clippers him. Dante open. One. Hmm? Clippers Mavs round one. I'm here. For locked it. in. Let Dante me tell you is what. shooting eight for twelve Usually on plus three. It's fuck the Clippers. Shit, eight for twelve is crazy. We're here, baby. I'm excited. There's a 95, 96 percent chance it's Mavs Clippers round PG one. PG heating up. It's like Quiet the only matchup that's Harden set. trending in the right Harden direction. Harden trending in the right direction. Russ I'm excited. Back. I'm excited. For Last him, time the Mavericks met the Clippers, they were up two zero to begin the series. They were up seventeen points, I think, in the first quarter in game yes. three, and then. Rick Carlisle, Kawhi happened. No, Rick Carlisle took out Luka Doncic, and then that's when the Clippers made their run. If you watch the game, that's what happened. And, uh, you know, that's how they choked it. But this time around, Kawhi the Mavericks going to win. The Mavericks going to win this Kawhi time. had Shaq-like efficiency, as my brother Riv has mentioned on this show multiple Full times. Full straight jump shot. You, th- you think the Clippers are going to beat the Mavericks in the first round? Um, like they can. Why do you act like they can't? Like they can. No, they're not. With uh, the Mavs win they yesterday, can. by the way, they tie the Lakers for the best clutch team in the NBA. Nice. 20, 22 it's and 9. Like, it's like a 4% percent going to win. It's Luka Doncic. It's Luka Doncic. It's always been Luka Same Doncic. way I said, there's no way he missed the playoffs two years in a row. It wasn't going to happen. Oh, he missed He's it. not going to lose it in was, the first I round. I mean, thank God. I didn't have him missing the playoffs. Oh, you did. Well, you I, had, had him missing missed, a, I had him in the plan. The playoff lock, bracket. They're in the plan. Yeah, yeah. 10th seed. So the mm-hmm. last team. Why the hell is they thought about the Bulls of plus 24 in the They made some moves at the trade deadline that they didn't Bulls have. Bulls are plus 24 in the clutch. I mean, Gafford's been unbelievable. Oh, we're pretty good in the clutch. You know, you're going to top six? Yeah, obviously. I had a bet with you. I had to keep it going. Nice. Okay. That clutch one against you just looks better and better. Man. Good luck, man. That's all I'm saying. You know, the Pelicans beat the Suns, but they didn't move up in the standings. They didn't. Because the Suns had the tiebreaker. So the Suns are still alive, was, you know? That was it. Zion, fourth quarter. Was Zion like, destroyed them. Zion... So fucking good, man. Zion's playing some good defense. And yo, CJ hitting seven threes. Yeah, mm-hmm. CJ's been balling all season long. Another player that's gone under the radar because obviously he's not. I think Beal had a really good game in L, but Beal had a solid game. I was gonna say, and Herb was Herb was locked in on defense. He said, "Fuck Trey the offense." Murphy he only too. took two shots. Yeah, Trey Murphy, another one. That that wing duo right there is dangerous. They got a great team, and that's about to be the seventh, eighth seed in the West. The West is. This might be. I. I mean, I feel like we say this every year, but legitimately, this might be the best West I've ever seen. It's nuts. 
Last, last thing I'll say before we move on. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns is expected to come back before the start of the playoffs. That. Nice. That's, That's enormous for the Timberwolves. Get, at least get, like, try to get like two games in, get 20, 25 minutes, try to get some shots up because um, everyone's been on the Timberwolves. Everyone's like, let's play the Wolves. Let's play the Wolves. Disrespecting them. Now, with the, with the Suns, what team do you think in the first round they can upset, more likely to upset, the Timberwolves or, o- or OKC? Yeah. I more feel like likely. this year they've had the Timberwolves number. I would say Minnesota. I watched, they don't have I watched them against Minnesota. Cats rusty. Cat, okay, yeah, I mean, and Cats, it they've sounds dominated. Like um, Minnesota tough. just can't keep up offensively. No, but they have, we've been saying they, they have bodies it. to throw at that big three. They do, but I don't trust. I'll go. I'll go. Tim's. I think OKC. They, they just that, they just have too many. Team. They have too many ways to beat the you. The Suns have won two in a row uh, this year. The two and zero. Oh. First game, 133 to 115. Second game, 97-87. Some ugly 90 No, the ninety. The, the most recent back. game was terrible. Again, the Okay, so you just have too many ways to beat you when it comes to the Suns. I think the Thames are very, like, one-dimensional offensively. Uh, I would take the Suns. Where it's, like, again, a, a big concern for, if you're OKC, is the matchups against more dominant bigs. The, the Suns really don't have that. Chet Holmgren probably still has a, a solid series. Warriors style. For sure. I look at the the Timberwolves versus the Suns. Again, obviously Rudy Gobert is going to have his, he's going to be a defensive force, but you have Kevin Durant obviously who can stretch the floor. Uh, Devin Booker can stretch. I feel like Bradley Beal is the X factor in that series because of primarily uh, the majority of the attention, I should say, is going to be on Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. And then you're you're forgetting about Bradley Beal, who's still been playing some really good basketball recently. So I, I I look at that matchup as the better of the two, but I, I still feel like I would lean both these other teams over the Suns. That's tough because I think, like, stylistically, you match up against the Wolves, a super physical team, of course, best defense in the NBA. Offensively, they can struggle. Thunder, um, they've been great offensively and defensively by the numbers, but obviously don't have that type of physicality. But still, on the wing, you could throw Lou Dort, you could throw J-Dub at Devin Booker and Kevin Durant um, and at least make it tough for them. So I would say probably more likely to upset the Wolves because OKC's got some buys they could throw at you, but I trust them more offensively than Minnesota. Well, OKC, you're trying to play their game, really, what it is, because I think the Suns and OKC style is similar. It's going to be a lot of Katie at the five in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And that's leaning into what OKC does best. Mm -hmm. You're trying to outrun a young team. That's what they do. That's why I think with Minnesota, it's an easier matchup for them. And it it just all depends on how the bracket falls. These next couple of games are going to be important if they want to keep that sixth seed. That's their best chance in advancing in the playoffs. Yeah, round one, you you don't want to play. Denver most definitely. If you stay at six, you play I against I definitely OKC. think teams don't want to play the Suns, though, in the first round either. That's still a tough Oh, I'm sure. OKC, okay, I mean, it. you're a young team going up against one of the better, the biggest veterans in the league and Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, who's been there multiple years in a row. Bradley Beal's kind of that lone guy out of the the bunch of the, of the three, of course. But understanding that this is an experienced playoff, well, at least two experienced playoff performers, and they're hungry. They know what the, the mission is. They know if they don't win a championship – their tenure has been a failure, and you may be potentially looking at them not winning or yeah. not not moving forward with one another, correct? What? No, I'm looking at Dillo's <laughs> no, Before, I don't know if you called it, you said Tenier again. And you said oh, tenure. did you? Just, oh, I'm sorry, Ken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now Riv, uh, to finish off this show, some college basketball stuff happened. Riv Academy. Here Riv we go. Academy. John Calipari <laughs> is going to be the net, next head, head coach of Arkansas. No, I just, listen, Big I don't, I, Arkansas, I don't, man. All I know is that Kentucky, as of recently, kind of been <coughs> underachieving. Still, you know, getting guys to the NBA for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, the, what does John Calipari do, a, do for, the, <laughs> for Arkansas? I do have a game for us to play a little bit after I talk. Um, I, I, I definitely was shocked by the news. It caught me by surprise. I, I do know they had conversations after uh, Kentucky lost to Oakland. Crazy loss. You know, losing to them is nuts. You know, I definitely think they had an up and down year with their freshmen this year. And Calipari lately hasn't really been, you know, he's made the NCAA tournament the last three years, but hasn't made big advancements, big pushes. Everywhere Calipari has gone, they've been successful. You know, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, Memphis, Kentucky. You know, he's been that type of coach. And I think for him to kind of go away and go to Arkansas, like that's something that's good. I think both programs needed that. And same thing with Coach K in a different light. You know, Coach K was a winner. You know, he's always at the top of the game, but he had to leave Duke. Same way how Jay Wright left Villanova. Sometimes with those old veteran coaches, you just it's time to separate, whether it's in a bad way, in a good way. And I think with this one, 
It was it a was, bad way. It was a bad way, but at the same, I think they came to a comfortable departure. I do think him going to a team that's in the same conference is fake crazy. And I don't know how, how it's going to work because the last time he left Memphis for Kentucky, he brought his class with him to Kentucky. So he has another five-star class that he might take with him to Arkansas. They got to rebuild their whole thing because Trayvon Brazil just declared for the draft. Um, but in the 14 seasons he's at, like in the Calipari area, so 14-plus seasons, 47 players have been selected in the NBA draft more than any other school. Yeah. So he's a guy who, if you want to go to the league, you want to be successful. A lot of one and done. Yeah, you've seen the guys, you know, Maxie, Fox. Like, you've seen these guards, Malik Monk, Booker, like SGA. Jamal Murray, uh, Devin Booker. Like, these guys perform. So in this recent run, 35 first-round picks, three number one overall selections, 23 lottery selections, 26 players for – from Kentucky, we're on the 2023-2024 opening day rosters. That's including two ways in an active list. So he puts guys in the league. Unfortunately, for the college game, he may not be the best guy. It might be a guy like Bill Self in Kansas or, you know, Coach K, but he left. Or, you know, the, the coach UConn's from Houston. Coach. UConn and Hurley. You know, the Hurleys dance. They, 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 mm-hmm. they do what they do. So I think for Calipari, this is definitely not the biggest problem. You know, I think... He's a guy who, you know, you still want, if you still want to go to the league, you still want to be that type of player, not be a college player, but be an NBA player. That's a guy you kind of go trend with. I think he can still, you know, coach. I think he can still bring guys in. I just think for Kentucky, it was time to kind of go in that different direction. They haven't been successful. And even though you're a successful coach, we've seen sometimes you still don't get that benefit of the doubt. Sometimes you do need that change, that adjustment. I mean, we saw Mike Budenholzer win a championship, and then a year or two later he was fired. So, like, it doesn't matter who you are. Sometimes you do get the short end of the stick. Now, I do have a game. Now, let me ask you something before we start with the game. It's a fun game. Do you think that Calipari would now change his style to be more – more equipped to succeed in, at the college level, more so than getting players to the draft. No, because I don't think his style was the problem. I just think the lack of a lack of talent in the players he's got lately has been the issue. You know, I think so. He scouted wrong. Not scouted wrong. I just think so the college, Shepherd isn't him. Shepherd is a good, good player. Rob is a good player. I just think like the game has caught up to him in a sense where now you need more than just freshmen. You know, you not, you kind of need those veterans and freshmen, or you need super talented freshmen. You know, even his most talented years, like the year they almost won defeated, they lost to Frank Kaminsky and Sam Decker in Wisconsin. Like, So I think you still need that veteran presence. So maybe not change his style, but change his approach a little bit, where you go in the transfer market, you get players, and then you also bring in the freshmen. You kind of have a you know, a, a, a dynamic, healthy where, yeah, healthy balance of young and older players. So I don't think his, his style is the issue. I think more so his, you know, his approach to the game. So I do have this game. Are you guys ready to play sure. this game? Yes. All right, here we go. So Kyler Perry's players, when they get to the league, they do their thing. Since 2010, he's had nine players make all NBA in the league. Okay. Can you tell me the nine players? The Marcus Cousins. That's John one, Wall, two, okay. Aaron Fox, SGA, four, Devin Booker, five, six, Carl Anthony Towns, seven. How many more do we need? Two more. Two. Okay. Anthony Davis. Mm-hmm. I said that. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we said cooked. Okay, we did cook. That's cooked fucking fast. <laughs> so you said D- yeah. You said John oh, Wall. <laughs> you said D. You said you said did you, you said John Wall. We said yeah. Darren Fox, didn't we? You did say Fox. Uh-huh. Did say Fox. You said John Wall, Boogie, Fox, A D, Booker, SGA, Cat. So you need two more. Okay. I'm trying to think of players that were on those teams. Shit. That are stars, not like Alex Pothyris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was a cool player. He's actually a, he might be a coach out there right now. Bam on a bio. No, he did not make NBA, brother. I wish he did. That was okay. a good guess, though. It has to be relatively recent. Oh, wait. Derrick Rose. Yeah. Was, yeah. Duh. Duh. Okay, so we're counting like Memphis, too? It was 2010. So. Okay. D Rose did a play for Calipari. Mm-hmm. He won MVP in 11. So you're missing one guy. Ray John Rondo? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He wasn't on the list. Did he make all NBA though? Yeah. That'd be dope. Yeah. I but don't know if he did, did he? Was he? Before, he was before two-time, 2010, though. I thought he was two time all NBA. He was. He, was he went to Kentucky. This last player is before 2010? No, no, he's out. Oh, oh. These are since 2010. Oh, my bad. My Rondo bad. was before 2010. You're right. You're right. Yeah. He, did he make all NBA? Yeah, right. he did. He made it one time. Right. Rondo? Yeah. Got it. You should know this. He was one. You should know this. You should absolutely know this. I should know this you because should, of... Okay, if I give you the hint, you'll know, but you should know this. God damn it. 
Next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it's Julius not- Randle. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. Shout out God, it wasn't Brunson. It had to be Randle. <laughs> so the nine players that have made All NBA since 2010 under John Calipari. D. Rose, John Wall, DeMarcus Cousins, A.D., Devin Booker, SGA, Cat, Fox, and Julius Randle. Here we go. On that, bro. Well done. Nice job, bro. Nice job to end off the show. Yep. All right, this is going to be it for episode 371. You guys can follow us on Twitter at Pick a Side Pod, we found on a way Instagram, to make this this long. and TikTok at Pick a Side Podcast. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.